hard break at noon. So do not approach after that time. All right, and so I'm just still waiting for them to zoom in then. All right, I'm going to call the docket. Today is Thursday. If you're here, let me know you are here. If you're not here, I'm going to assume you're not here. A warrant may be issued for your arrest and custody. We have Ricardo Torres, Jose Constancio Gonzalez, John Dominguez. Curtis Williams has been reset. Kyle Hardy. Kyle Hardy. Ah, he's in custody. Thank you. Edward Ramirez, custody. Annette Zavala. Thank you. Adam Sancho. Adam Sancho. And custody is Brittany Brubaker, Roland Esquivel. Roland Esquivel. And custody is Christine Hernandez. Brandon Rocky Pina. Brandon Pina. Latoya Dowden is in custody. Uh, Valerie Ramos is being recalled for Monday. Antonio Rios is in custody. John Klosna. Isaiah Escobedo, custody. Michaela Guerra. Michaela Guerra. In custody is Kenneth Kim. Josue Carvajal. Stephen Dixon, custody. Kiara Gomez, custody. Jonathan Allen, custody. Say John Smith. Say John Ray Smith. I'm going to have to check. I think that may have been placed on another date. Adam Sancho. Adam Raymond Sancho. Roberto Gonzalez. Myra Gallegos. Hal Hardy is in custody. Mario Aguilar, custody. Adam Sancho. Judge, I, uh, I got an email that I think he's been arrested, Judge. <clears throat> All right. All right, Deputy Lord, can you check to see if he's in custody? Jonathan Allen, custody. Robert Shanahan. Robert Shanahan. And in custody is Chardonnay Lockhart. Uh, Miss Portillo. Satara Portillo. Johnny Aguirre. Johnny Aguirre. All right. Is there anyone who's present whose name was not called? All right. These are the rules of the court. Criminal trial divisions files are to my left. Family violence files are over here. Please grab your file and have a seat. Uh, the state will call you in the order in which they receive your file. Do not approach the court if you have not conferred with the state. If your client is in custody, you need to have them brought out. For security reasons, there are only so many people that we can bring out from the back. So please do not be selfish today. If you are asking for your client to be brought out, please do not leave because if your client is in the box and you leave, that means there's another attorney who can't have their client brought out. Today is Thursday, or as we call it, uh, Friday Eve. So we should be excited about that. People who have someone who's on probation, do not approach the court unless you have spoken to the probation officer. Ms. Abrams, could you raise your hand? That is her office. Do not sit on her desk. Do not turn your back to her because she is sitting down. And if you turn her back, your back to her, she's going to have a view that she does not want. Do not crowd her desk because it's very tiny. So with that being said, if you have a client who wishes to speak in a different language, whether you speak their language or not, we need an interpreter called down. Once you request an interpreter, do not leave the courtroom because there's a limited number of interpreters. So this Friday Eve is going to be a great day if we make it that way. So everyone, please confer, be kind to each other.
Thank you. And so I guess we're waiting for the person to dial in from. Judge, they do they need a passcode. There's no passcode. We keep telling them there is not a passcode. They're requesting a passcode. Do they have an email? An email? Yes. Tell them I'll send an invitation through email and they can get the number from there. Your Honor, Sancho is touching me right now. Okay. Yes. I got hired this morning. Okay. I filed my notice of appearance. Yeah. He's obviously not going to be here. Well, I mean, maybe. We'll see. Okay. But have you conferred with the state? I would love to, but I have some other courts to go to where my clients are there. Yeah, but I'll if you back. confer with the state. I will be back. Ten minutes. What? Ten minutes. What? Ten minutes. No. Because we're recessing at exactly at 12. So everybody who didn't take care of anything. You may have to come back and you may come back when it's inconvenient for you. It's never inconvenient. <laughs> you know I love being here. Okay. I'll be back. All right. Ask them, do they have an email address? Yeah, and I'll send them an invite by email. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, morning. I don't know. Okay. 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 You know what? I just don't say the first name anymore. <laughs> All right, Mr. Porter, before we take this up, where are we on this? That's what I was approaching for. I just talked. She said they don't have the results in yet. All right. And we're waiting for the results for the. The, the swap she took last week. And okay. you said check in on Thursdays tip. They're yeah, back yeah. in. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll 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 go ahead. We're going to take this up then so we don't have to come back. Uh, are you ready? Yes, Court is calling 2023 CR2172 State of Texas versus Satare Portillo. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Defense? Robert, Robert Porter. Robert. All right, so we're here for sentencing. We've been waiting for the results of a UA, and that result hasn't come in yet. Uh, probation, do you have any idea when that will be ready? Uh, that was done in all five years, so if I would have thought that we would have received it by now, the results didn't go the on the day. It wasn't submitted on the day that the court required, so it took a little while to get her in. So right now we're just waiting. Um, it was submitted on the 21st. So I thought it would be in by yesterday, today, but it still says to pay. Okay. All right. Ms. Portilla, can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give would be the truth and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes. All right. You can lower your hand. How many children do you have? Two. What are their ages? Six and 14. Are you employed? Yeah. What do you do? Manage properties, apartments. Okay. How long have you been doing that? Eight years. And does anyone live with you other than your children or do your children live with you? Yes, they do. All right. Anyone else stay with you? My aunt as well. Okay. When is the last time you've used any type of substance? I haven't used any type of substance. No. In your lifetime? Well, no, it's been quite a while. So my question is, when is the last time? Uh, probably about a year and a half ago. And what drugs were you using a year and a half ago? Um, marijuana. That's all? Yes. Okay. This is what I'm going to want. Uh, probation. <laughs> you need a pen? All right. It's going to be eight years deferred adjudication, $2,000 fine probated. I'm going to want her on the patch until further notice. 
Thanks. All right, just one moment, everyone. And we're off the record for just one moment. Is this Leah, L-E-A-H? All right, so it is going through. All right, we're back on the record. So there's to be a patch until further notice. All right, Norma, the first one you, ah, just one second. Sorry, everyone, we're trying to get the prison zoomed in. All right, Norma, I'm going to forward this to you in email because the links that I've been given it comes back as undeliverable. So I've just sent it to you. All right. So eight years, sorry about that. Eight years deferred adjudication, $2,000 fine probated, a patch until further notice. I'm going to want a TAP evaluation done and follow all TAP recommendations. And counsel, if TAP recommends inpatient treatment, you'll need to come back to court. Yes, sure. There's to be 200 hours of community service restitution. She's to complete parenting classes. And those hours will be waived once parenting classes is, are completed. And probation, you can decide which parenting class you all classes you all think would be appropriate for her. Proof of employment. Y'all need to whisper proof of employment within 30 days. There should be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. Regular reporting by Zoom or in person. I'm going to want field visits one time every three months, random. And that's until further notice. In just one moment. Who is Michael Portillo? That's yes, your I'm juvenile sure. child, right? Yes, ma'am. Who is Maria Aviles? My ex-mother-in-law. There's to be no contact with Maria Guadalupe Aviles, I guess that's how you pronounce it, A-V-I-L-E-S. Aviles. Um, could I say something, though? Sure. Oh. Well, because my mother-in-law, we do have a lot of contact with each other. About it, so. We have to contact each other. Because I'm not, not supposed to have contact with her, my ex-husband. Oh, for kid exchange? Yeah. We're going to have to find somebody else. Can, oh. I'll talk to her about that. All right, thank you. Probation, is there anything else she needs? No, Your Honor. Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? No. All right, I'm showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal. And counsel, I believe I gave you a copy last time. 
Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All right. From here on out, everything that you do in your life, there are two questions you should ask yourself before doing them. Is this something that could result in me going to prison for life? If the answer is yes, don't do it. The other question you should ask yourself, is this something that may result in me going to prison for the rest of my life? If the answer is yes, don't do it. Do you understand? I do understand. I take no joy or pleasure in sending the people to prison. But if it's warranted, I will. And your attorney will tell you I've sent people to prison before. So you have children. Yes. You need to look out for them. All right. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Yeah, let me know what your recommendation is. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but Sean, yeah, sure. when you have a chance, could you pull that uh, report on Sherry Cooper that was sent to me? All right, and I'll I'll give you the cause number. Excuse me. Uh, Norma, were they able to get it? I I already sent it. All right, thank you. Uh, let me see. Okay. Yes. So, um, because she's on um, referred for criminal child division, so maybe uh, and then Brittany, when she comes in, so we can speak. I, I want to know this other guy that she has in her life who is it, and see if they receive this report and if there's any criminal charges that are pending for the guy. Yes. Ah, here we are. Hello, uh, caller, could you please unmute? Hello. 
Hello, this is this a is Ramsey the Ramsey Law Library. library? Yes, we're hearing. Yes. Okay, All right, I'm going to need everyone to please uh, stop talking because this is a call in from the prison and the microphones are not working as loud as they could be. Please. Quiet. Thank you. Hello. 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 Yes. Is this with uh, Aaron Trevino? Yes. Yes. All right. And is he present? Um. All right. We're going to go on the record. Everyone, stop talking. Wait till we finish with this. So everyone have a seat. All right. The court is calling 2021 CR 7554, State of Texas versus Aaron Trevino. It's an appeal. You're, you're good. And uh, could I have attorney and for Mr. Trevino announce, please? Good morning, Judge Judith. All right. And are you Aaron Trevino? Ma'am. All right. Uh, Mr. Trevino, can you give me your TDCJ number, please? 243-6505. Could you repeat it, please? 243-6105. All right. And Ms. Wimmert, is this your client? Yes, ma'am, it is. All right. Do you have any objection to his appearing by Zoom? Absolutely not. All right, Mr. Uh, Trevino, I'm going to have you uh, raise your hand for me, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. Um, I'm sorry, what's your answer? Yes, ma'am. All right, I'm going to ask you some questions regarding your appeal. Uh, do you still wish to continue with this appeal? Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, do you still wish to have Ms. Wormert as your appellate attorney? Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, Ms. Wormert, what is the reason you have not filed your brief? Um, I'm currently working on another one that's due, Judge. I should have this brief done by August 20th. All right. And do you know off the top of your head which brief are you working on? Uh, the, my client's name is Mike Ramos. He's out of the 437th District Court. All right. And I'm sorry, when will you have this appeal completed? August 20th. All right. Uh, Mr. Trevino, do you have any other questions? Uh, no, ma'am, not at this moment. All right. Your attorney is stating that she'll have her brief filed by August 20th. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, and it is the court's understanding that you wish to continue with your appeal. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And you wish to keep Ms. Judith Wimmert as your attorney for your appeal. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And Ms. Wimmert, you'll have your brief done by August 20th? Yes, ma'am. All right. Is there anything else from either side? Ma'am. All right. And to T TDCJ, thank you so much for zooming in. I appreciate it. No problem. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Hmm? Yes. I'm sorry. No, I did not. I have no idea. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to ask uh, Tech?
All right. Can you hear us this? Yes. Barbara. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's a never ending story with tech equipment, isn't it? I think there's they're doing something back there. Ah. Mm -hmm. And now we can have Judge John Young's client brought on the Yeah. I mean, it's uh, is it just me or is it hot in here? It's hot. It's not too it's Friday Eve. That's why we are going to be okay. Yes. Oh, sure. I will send the email that it's extremely hot in here. They say it's freezing. You know what? Is it possible? Am I asking too much out of life to ask that they bring in some actual people who know how to do ACs? Is that is that asking too much out of life? It's every morning we gotta send an email that it's too hot in here. What why would we do that? These are just questions I'm beginning to have. Should we go up there and, and do a YouTube video and fix the AC? Because it, to me, it makes no sense that it's extremely hot here. And then across the hallway, they're wearing winter coats. 
All right, you want to say on Stephen Allen Dixon? Is calling 2022 CR 6340D, State of Texas versus Stephen Allen Dixon. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Daniel Escobar for the State of Texas. Defense. Ramon Cerna for the defendant. And are you Mr. Dixon? Yes, ma'am. All right, I don't have a trial court certification for the gentleman. It's on the wall. I'll get it there. And sir, are you retained on this? Yes. Okay, you don't have, I don't have any uh, file as an attorney record. We filed in, I think it was the day before yesterday or yesterday. What's the date? I don't know. Uh, He said there's an issue with the mic. Oh no, you all don't check. Yeah, it's gonna be yeah, I check. Okay, sorry. All right, no problem. How's it going with him, Judge? Oh, good. Other than the heat, how's it going with you? Tired. Puppy woke me up late last night. Wait, who woke you up late? My puppy. Oh. Yeah. Well, they tend to do that. Yeah, no, he's a he's a little he's a handful. How old is he? Uh, six months. About to be. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a dog. Need dog. Yeah. Oh. But wow. It's a, it's a, it was six degrees. Girl, six and I. Uh, whether or not he has to wake up and actually deal with it. So mm -hmm. usually he uh, ends up losing that fight. <laughs> and you know, you can't start that thing where they are uh, in bed or on this. You have to. Yeah. yeah I know. You should do a play date with Bashan's dog. Honestly, once he gets a little bit more mature and he's not as much of a jerk, then I probably <laughs> plan to bring him to some event where yeah. I introduce him to people. All right, he needs to sign. Okay, sure. Okay. 
All right. Thank you. All right. We're going to go on the record in 2022 CR 6340 B state of Texas versus Stephen Allen Dixon. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Daniel Escobar for the state of Texas. Defense. Ramon Cerner for the defendant. Room. And are you Stephen Allen Dixon? Yes. All right. And counsel, the coordinator asked if you had filed your notice of retained counsel. When did you find it? Sal, I'm sorry. When did you file it? I believe it was yesterday. Your Honor. All right. And Mr. Dixon, this is your attorney? Yes, ma'am. All right. Mr. Dixon, I'm showing you what's entitled motion to revoke community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Are you the same Stephen Allen Dixon who was placed on community supervision in 2022 CR 6340B for the offense of possession of a controlled substance penalty group one less than one gram on September 29, 2022 for a term of four years? Is that you? I'd like to think I'm there, guy, but yeah, I just need you it is. All right, I just need you to answer the questions. All right, now is not the time for you to ingratiate yourself. I just need you to ask answer these questions. So is that you? Yes, ma'am. All right, state. Violated condition number four in Bear County, Texas, the defendant Stephen Allen Dixon, who then and there failed to report to the supervision officer as directed for the months of October 2022, November 2022 and December 2022 in violation of condition number four. How do you plead to that, true or not true? I think that's the only violation. Yes. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number four, the court could find it true, grant the motion, sentence you to 16 months in the state jail facility and a $1,200 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number four? Yes, ma'am. Court will find violation condition number four true. Is there an agreement? Uh, yes, Your Honor. It's for the defendant to remain in the Bear County Jail for a drug court evaluation and a TAP evaluation and to follow all the recommendations. All right. So here's the, the court's issue. And maybe someone can address this with me. When I placed him on probation in September, I had already ordered a drug court evaluation. And according to this, he's been missing, didn't show up. So number one, well, the other number one, there are no, there's no room for him at felony drug court because they're full. So why shouldn't he go to the state jail facility? Because the easiest thing to do is to report and he did not. And, and your Honor, my client uh, has indicated that he made attempts to to report. He got on to Zoom uh, with his boss. He currently is gainfully employed, um, and they were unable to connect via Zoom. Uh, he, my client indicates that he did go to an in person, uh, and, and the door was locked. Uh, I spoke with the state, and we've come to the understanding that maybe he should come here if he uh, was unable. Well, no. I mean, he's been missing since October of 2022. So that's October. He didn't report. November, he didn't report. December, he didn't report. January, he didn't report. February, he didn't report. March, he didn't report. April, he didn't report. May, he didn't report. June, he didn't report. And here we are in July. And I believe the only reason he's here before me is because he was arrested. Did he get arrested reporting? Or did somebody uh, find him on the warrant and bring him in? I believe it was found find him on the warrant. So felony drug court is not available for him. Why shouldn't he be revoked? He didn't report. That's it. That's the easiest thing to do is to report. Your Honor, you had told me. You want to raise your right hand? Yes, ma'am. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. You can lower your hand. State your name for the record. My name is Stephen Dixon. All right. Do you wish for your client to speak? It's from where I go. Go ahead. Um, the last time I was in here, um, I took your words to heat. You told me that I was getting old and there was never going to be a time for me to turn around if I didn't turn around. I had to cut a lot of needless people out of my life and I did that. I moved from the apartment I was just because there were drugs in that neighborhood. I moved to an apartment closer to my job. I cut all the people out of my life. I quit heroin on my own. I see my son 
and for two weeks, I hadn't seen my son in over 10 years, but he knew I was sober. I'm trying, man. I, but the question is, why didn't you report? That's the so easiest thing. In the whole mix of the mix of everything. You know, I'm, I'm, I work 80 something hours a week. I work 82 hours a week. Oh, so you can't, here's the thing. And I tried I tried hard at first. I'm but gonna, let, me, let me just tell you this. Guess what? It's my when fault. People, when people who are on probation say, oh, I've got my life together, you still have to report. Otherwise, you're not on probation. Otherwise, it would be easy for everybody to do on probation. Let me take your probation, judge. I know I'm supposed to report to probation, but you know what? I'm living my life doing my own thing. I'm just not going to pick up any criminal cases. So I don't know what you all want me to do. Felony drug court is not available for him because they have no room for him at felony drug court. So either way, you're going into custody. If I decide to um, put you in inpatient treatment, you're going in custody. You're going to wait for a bed at the jail because felony drug court is not available for you. Probation? Your Honor, um, felony, as you stated a couple of times, I do know that felony drug court is at capacity. Um, we would like to do the tap in custody to see which facility will be best suited for him and for him to sign his original conditions of probation. Okay. And I understand that's what probation wants, but I don't understand why he should not be revoked. And what's up with, the, is that a Spurs tattoo? No. Okay. You shouldn't hide it if it's it's not a Spurs tattoo mm -hmm. because that makes me think things. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm originally from Oklahoma, man. All right. So why shouldn't I send him to the state jail facility? Your Honor. And I know everybody is saying he didn't have a chance, but he didn't have a chance because he didn't report. Your Honor, if, if, if we could give him, and I know this is an old way of saying it, is another chance. So that way, and I would be there along the way to make sure that he reports, to make sure that he does what he needs to do. Probation. Your Honor, um... I agree that Mr. Dixon had uh, ample time to report. He knows, I mean, he was granted back in September. He could have come to the court at any time and you know that we would have taken care of him. Um, I'm not quite sure what the issues are or drug issues or, or so forth. Um, you look at his previous criminal history, I know um, there seems to be an issue. And see, my problem is he has done absolutely nothing. Zero. And if he would not have been arrested, he would still be out there not reporting. All right. Is there anything else from... Anyone? Your Honor, my client is willing to submit the air quality testing right now to show that he hasn't been using um, the UA right now to show he hasn't been using. He's willing to do that and to demonstrate that he is trying to stay on at least that part of the line. Um, again, as I indicated, I would be his retained counsel to tell him, you know, and guide him through the process of reporting. All right, my problem is, again, he has done nothing and there's no excuse for not doing anything. All right, this is what the court is gonna do. Court is gonna grant the motion, sentence you to six months in the state jail facility, give you credit for any time served. I'll suggest the therapeutic community There's a $1,200 fine. Time and money will run concurrent. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. All right. You have a limited right to appeal, and that is as it relates to the allegation in the motion, not the fact that you were on probation. We can go off the record. Mr. Dixon? 
I understand what you're saying. However, the easiest thing to do on probation is report. Um, whether I would have sentenced you or not, you were still going to be in custody. Once you uh, go to the state jail facility, I suggest you ask them to place you in the therapeutic community. And when you are released from the state jail facility, do better. All right, thank you. Who's here on Kenneth Kim? I am your honor, James Sewell. All right, the court is calling 2021. Mr. Kim, come down. Court is calling 2021 CR 11285 and 2021, ah, sorry, 2021 CR 11285, State of Texas versus Kenneth Sung Gung Kim. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Defense. James Sewell for the defense. And are you Kenneth Sung Gung Kim? Yes, ma'am. Showing you what's entitled motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision and first amendment motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am, I did. Are you the same Kenneth Sung Gung Kim who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2021 CR 11285 for the offense of possession of a controlled substance penalty group one, one gram to four grams? on February 22nd, 2022, for a period of four years. Is that you? Yes, ma'am. All right, state. Uh, violated condition number one, on or about the 17th day of May 2023 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Kenneth sung Kim, committed the offense of evading arrest or detention in violation of condition number one. How do you plead to that, true or not true? True. And your honor, we waive and abandon the other uh, violations. No objection. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number one, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, and sentence you up to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine? Yes, ma'am. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number one? Yes, I do. Court will find violation of condition number one true. Is there an agreement? Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. We, uh, we're asking the court to deny the motion and to uh, follow probation's recommendation of uh, the cognitive track local ISF followed by ISP supervision. That's our understanding, Your Honor. All right, what has he done on probation? Yeah. You wanna raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give would be the truth, the death but the truth, so help you God? Yes, ma'am. All right, you can lower your hand, state your name for the record. Yes, ma'am, All right, and what have you done since you've been on probation? I've gotten a job immediately. Um, I've been reporting uh, until I didn't. I paid the fines. Wait a minute. Money. Let's backtrack. You said you were you've been reporting until you didn't. Well, until the, the violation, a couple of months. Okay. Um, I was paying the fines best I could, and to be honest, Your Honor, I'm not gonna lie to you. I let the things stress me out, build up on me. I know it's not an excuse. I had fighting with my my baby mother with my kids. You mean the mother of your your child? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Um, and being in trouble and being separated from them because I used to live with them prior to the the jailing and before I got out, she had found someone else and um, kicked me out. And it was really hard for me to maintain a place to have stability. And I was just trying to focus on that more than keeping my job and paying the bills or the, the fines. And I had no phone and I was just letting things pile up and stress me out. And it got the best of me. And I know it's not an excuse and I'm sorry, you know. Your Honor, he has twins, and he has assured me that he does want to get employment and get back on life. He's 32 years old, and uh, he's uh, got a twin boy and girl, five years old. And we're asking that uh, we continue with this intensive uh, supervisory. And I think he's going to uh, quit the drugs completely and uh, turn his life around, if given the chance. Probation? Your Honor, um, the last report of direct contact was 12-20 of 2022. Um, there was a telephone call 
or voicemail received from the probationer on 1-9-23 um, stating that he was still working on registering for his BIPP and would call Fort Sam Cemetery in regards to his community service hours. The um, BIPP course at this time has not been completed and um, his community service hours has not been completed. He did pay a total of $300 toward his assessed fines of $3,276 um, and is currently behind $925. Um, he failed to submit the required UAs in August, September, and December of 2022. All right, it appears you've done nothing on probation. Why should I? Well, I don't want to say nothing. You've only done, if we were talking about numbers from one to 10, you're at number one. Why haven't you completed the BIPP course? Your Honor, uh, I was like 22 classes out of 25 classes in, and I didn't uh, show up for the third time. It was hard for me to find a ride. That's when the things started getting escalated. That's what VIA bus is for. Why do people have a problem with VIA bus? It's inexpensive. It gets you from point A to point B. You're right, Your Honor. Um, that was around the time when the stress escalated in my life with other unrelated things that I should, shouldn't have let gotten my way. What other unrelated things? The with my baby mother and the uh, mother of your child the mother of my children and maybe it's a good thing that she doesn't have you in your life because she had because you have these criminal charges and they're drug charges yes ma'am i was working really hard to make sure that it wouldn't be on my record and i was really really upset about the fact that i didn't complete my stuff and when i realized that that was not going to be basically valid anymore and i knew that the warrant had came out for my arrest i just didn't you just yeah. ran. I, no, I just, yes. I didn't care to, to come back and tell you or, or to fix it. I just let it go on until I got caught. And that was my big mistake, too. Mm -hmm. And I'm very sorry for that, Your Honor. I'm begging for another chance. Mr. Seelaw? I just want to reiterate, Your Honor, his young age is 32. He appears to have uh, beaten the drugs. And he wants a, just another chance, Your Honor, and keep it off his record so he can... I'll continue on for his twins. Does he have an updated tap? When's the last tap you have? Uh, evaluation of the drugs. Oh, I do not show a tap on the Did you ever have one? All right, this is what the court is going to do. Court would find violation of condition number one, true. The court will deny the motion. Alternate man conditions to include a TAP evaluation while in custody. Follow TAP recommendations. If TAP recommends inpatient treatment, then he's going to be in inpatient treatment. If they recommend outpatient treatment, then he's going to go to ISF cognitive and substantive. Upon release, he's to do the UA hotline until further notice in parenting classes. Uh, Thank you, Your Honor. Thank probation, you, Your Honor. is there anything else? Okay, so for outpatient, we, we say that ISS substance and cognitive. So um, instead of the local bare ISF, you want him to go to state? Yes. And can you repeat what you said after that? Okay, so what I want to do is I want him to have a TAP evaluation while in custody. If the TAP evaluate, uh, evaluation recommends outpatient treatment, I want him to start with ISF cognitive and substantive. Yes, then after being released from that, I'm going to want the UA hotline until further notice and parenting classes. Thank you, Honor. Is there anything else you need from the court? No, no. From here on out. Every decision that you make, there are two questions you should ask. One, will this potentially result in me going to prison for 10 years? If the answer is yes, don't do it. The second question you should ask yourself, is it possible or will this maybe result in me going to prison for 10 years? If the answer to that question is yes, don't do it. You understand? Yes. Your attorney will tell you, 
I do not take any pleasure in sending people to prison, but if it's warranted, I will. And if, I, if that happens in your case, guess what? You will go to prison and we will move on to the next person. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. So do not come back here begging me to give you another chance because this is your chance. Thank you. Yes. And if you have the mother of your children who does not want you in her life, which it may, it appears to me on paper that it is justified. You need to stop trying to contact her. If you want to see your children, go next door to civil court and get a custody agreement. And guess what? When somebody leaves you, they have every right to pick up with somebody else. Nobody has to wait for you while you're at prison or at the county jail or on probation. This is not a lifetime movie. This is not a love story. In the real world, when you're away and you're not stepping up to your responsibilities, people can leave you and they do. And they move on to somebody else. You understand? All right. Good luck to you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Judge. May I be excused? Yes, you may be excused. Always nice seeing you, Mr. Seelaw. Sorry about the phone. Oh, no problem. It happens. No, it shouldn't happen. Oh, thank you. And Norma, there's someone in the in the Zoom for a Sid Grehe. I don't see where that's on the docket. Sid Grehe, G R E E H E Y. And there's also someone by the name of Rob Shanahan. All right, is his attorney here? Uh, uh, state, uh, Tracy Franklin is by Zoom for Robert Shanahan. It's for discovery. And it's a terroristic threat against the peace officer. Can I see that file, please? Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Tracy Franklin. Good morning, Your Honor. Sid Grehe filling in for Tracy Franklin. I'm here for defendant Robert Shanahan. All right, and where is Tracy Franklin? Um, she is in Frio County right now, Your Honor. Do you know about this discovery? Um, I know that there's discussion about a uh, pretrial diversion program. Um, no, I, we're here today for discovery. Was there a pretrial diversion on this case? No, Judge, uh, they've, uh, we've tendered an offer. Um, yeah, an offer has been tendered. There's no pretrial discovery on this case. So do you know about the discovery in this case and what is missing? Uh, I don't believe that anything is, is missing, Your Honor. She's nope. in trial. Now. She, um, she's doing what? I believe that she's in trial right now. Um, so we're just asking for a pretrial uh, reset on this case, Your Honor. No, the question is, do you believe she's in trial or you know she's in trial? Uh, I, be I, I know that her and Cole Nettles were in trial in Bear County. I know that she has cases in, in Frio. Um, I'm not sure if she went to Frio today or if she's staying for um, the trial with Cole Nettles today in Bear County. Well, here's the thing. If she's not in trial, she needs to be here. Today is not a pretrial diversion for Mr. Shanahan. Today is discovery day. And this is set for a discovery compliance. 
And if you're filling in for her and you don't know what discovery is missing, then this is all for naught. So uh, I would suggest that you find out, one, if she's in jury trial, because if she's not, then she needs to appear on this Zoom screen or either in person. And two, if you talk to her and discover she's in trial, it does no good to fill in for her if the defense doesn't know if discovery has been received or not. So I'm going to put you, uh, Mr. Shanahan, back in the waiting room, and this attorney is going to figure that out. Thank you, Your Honor. I apologize. Oh, no problem. Real quick, if you if you are inclined to grant a reset, we would ask the defendant and the uh, defense attorney appear in person for the next setting. Oh, no. Oh, yes, but we're not doing a reset now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Who's here on Annette Zavala? Yes. Annette Zavala. Court is calling 2021 CR 2982B, State of Texas versus Annette Zavala. Could I have parties? Announce for the record for the state. Daniel Escobar for the state of Texas. Defense. James Milan for the defendant. Are you Ms. Zavala? Yes. Showing you what's entitled motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision and supplemental motion to enter adjudication of guilt. I'm sorry. That's something else. All right. Did you review this document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. Are you the same Annette Zavala who is placed on deferred adjudication in 2021 CR 2982B for the offense of attempted possession of a controlled substance, penalty group one, less than one gram, on May 26, 2021, for a period of two years. Is that you? Yes. All right, state. Violated condition number 23, on or about the 19th day of April 2023 in Bear County, Texas. The defendant, Annette Zavala, did then and there fail to submit to drug testing as directed by the supervision officer in violation of condition number 23. How do you plead to that, true or not true? Sure. Uh, Your Honor, state waives all the violations. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. In fact, she actually did complete her community service hours and okay. all that stuff. All right, did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number 23, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, sentence you up to one year in the Bear County Jail and up to a $4,000 fine? Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number 23? You need to speak up. Yes, ma'am. Is there an agreement? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, it's to extend uh, the probation term to two years and amend for residential treatment with SATA followed by application. And, and Judge, we're in agreement with that. The only issue we would ask the court is if uh, you could, she could turn herself into SATA or begin the. Uh, wait the wait for a bed in a couple of weeks she has this is our first setting but she does want to take this out of but she wants she she has child care issues with her granddaughter she helps her daughter take care of her granddaughter she's got to uh, take her tie up some loose ends at home and so all we're asking judge is if she can turn herself in um in a couple of weeks so that she can tie up those loose ends at home she she, she said that she'd be clean today if you wanted to test her Oh, yeah, let's do a UA today. All right, do you need any water? No. All right, we're going to do a UA. Who's here on Roland Esquivel? 
Uh, Hello. Been a bit. I, I forget what side to stand. You're right here. Where's your client? He's walking out good. All right, court is calling 2015 CR 1977 State of Texas versus Roland Esquivel Jr. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Thanks, Wilkins, for the state. Mick Aguilar on behalf of Roland Esquivel. Jr. Are you Mr. Esquivel Jr.? Showing you what's entitled motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision. First amended motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision and state's motion to supplement pending motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision. Did you review those documents with your attorney? Did you understand them? Are you the same Roland Esquivel Jr. who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2015 CR 1977 for the offense of possession with intent to deliver a controlled substance penalty group one, four grams to 200 grams, on July 20th, 2015, for a period of five years and extended for two years. Is that you? All right, state. Judge, I'm on the first amended uh, violated condition number one on or about the 26th day of December 2020 in Bear County, Texas. The defendant, Roland Esquivel Jr., committed the offense of resist arrest, search, transportation in violation of condition number one. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True. Sure. Violated condition number one, on or about the 26th day of December in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Roland Esquivel Jr., committed the offense of evade, arrest, or detention in violation of condition number one. How do you plead to that, true or not true? True. And, Your Honor, we waive and abandon the other violations. Any objection? No, Your Honor. Did you understand by pleading true to violations one and one, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, sentence you up to life in prison and up to a $10,000 fine? Yes, Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violations one and one? Yes, ma'am. Court will find one and one true. Is there an agreement? Subject to your approval, Judge, the recommending a five year sentence in TDC and taking uh, TIC and both of those case numbers are just for approval. Yeah, yes, Your Honor, that's right. Uh, TIC clause number 6528288 and 652. Eight two nine, and what's to happen with the drug case that's within the motion? I think that's already been closed. Yes. Okay. All right, Mr. Esquivel, are you asking the court to follow that agreement? Yes, sir. Are you waiving your right to appeal? Yes. Court will follow your agreement. The court is finding violations one and one true. Court is going to um, revoke. But as you do that. Um, it was not part of the agreement that we had asked the prosecutors, or we told the prosecutors we were going to ask for uh, time to get his affairs in order. Oh, just one second. Um, so the court is going to grant the motion, find you guilty, sentence you to five years in prison, taking into consideration 65282, 65289, give you credit for any time served. And counsel, what are you requesting? Uh, <clears throat> We were hoping to get time to get our affairs in order. He does have a wife and two children that are here, and he needs to make sure that we are taken care of while he's doing his time. Oh. He's not on GPS. He does understand that once he's played true and he does not show up, you do not have to follow the recommendation of five years PDC with the full length of punishment with the elder. All right, that will be denied. I'm showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Sure. All right, we can go off the record, Mr. Esquivel. I understand that your attorney wanted you to uh, get your affairs in order, but all you had to do was report on probation, not com commit any new offenses. And you did both. You understand? Sure. All right, good luck to you.
And Mick, can you make sure that the other case you said it was gone off the? Yeah, it was the system it showed on, on the paper. Within the, within the probation packet, it showed closed. Uh, All right. I think a year ago. Okay. Well, sometime in 2022. And we're going to get the dismissals for the. All right. Thank you. Okay, and probation on this one, they're saying that photos were turned into y'all or some sort of, so if you can see if that's, yeah. uh, if it's not that, yes. Hey, but you know what? Do you have your Fitbit on? See, it's, yeah. Don't be talking to the inmates. <laughs> No, that family did that frame. And you know that. Yes, I am. I am Hello, thank you.
All right, the court is calling 2023 CR 3485 State of Texas versus Ricardo Torres. Can our parties announce for the record for the state? Daniel Escobar from the state of Texas. Defense? Doug Campbell for Mr. Torres. And I think he's making his way down. Yeah. Right in the middle, sir. All right, are you Ricardo Torres? All right, you entered a plea on June 5th to count two of guilty. The state waived count one without objection. According to the plea bargain agreement, punishment is to be assessed at three years in the prison and the state is opposing your application. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report state? Yes, Judge. Defense? Yes, Judge. All right, is there a reason you're up, sir? All right. Any objections to the PSI report, State? No, Your Honor. Defense? No. All right, State, you're opposed. Why? Uh, primarily due to the defendant's criminal history, specifically the ag assault, deadly weapon charge that he had in the late 2000s, I believe he was charged, 2007, and well, he was in 2007 to eight years. So that was the State's primary concern. All right. Defense, do you have any witnesses? I do, Judge. In addition to my client, I have a sister. All right, if you'll call your witness. I'll call her first. Her name is Annette Nicolas Espinoza. All right, Annette Espinoza, if you'll come forward, please. Can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. Yes. All right. You can lower your hand. Uh, make sure you keep your voice up so the court reporter can hear. Okay. Can you state your name for the record? Annette Torres Espinoza. All right. Counsel. Miss Espinoza, are you Ricardo Torres' sister? Yes, I'm his youngest sister. And it's fair to say you've known him his entire life. Yeah, he's my oldest brother. And he's 66 years old. Yes, sir. Um, do you believe he has a drug problem? He has had a drug problem um, way back many years ago. And uh, just out of nowhere, I found out what happened. And I've been sick myself. So we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. Um, with respect to your brother, has he has expressed a desire to, uh, I guess, get some treatment for his drug issues? Yes. I'm saying a yeah, little louder. Yeah, yeah, yes. And what has he told you specifically? Just that he will never touch any more in his life. And do you think he would benefit from a, an outpatient type of a program to help him beat that, uh, that monkey that's on the foot? Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> now, Mr. Espinosa is uh, 66 years old. And Torres, old. He's uh, Torres, Torres. Torres, thank you. All right, everyone, make sure you only speak one at a time because the court reporter can't take down two people. And Although he's 66 years old, does he help you in your home? Yes. Can you tell the court how he's helping you and why he's helping you? He's helping me right now because I was just diagnosed with breast cancer and uterine cancer. So with that being said, I am not married. I live alone with my two children. And he is a great part of helping out with a lot of things that I need, which is going to the store, helping me at home. And um, when he's at my home, he knows that drugs are not allowed in my house, neither a glass of water. Is it fair to say that you're kind of up, uh, providing him familial supervision of the sort? Yes. And you're, making, you're trying to make sure that he stays on, on the straight path? Yes, sir. And with outpatient treatment, so that he can be successful in, in his uh, efforts? Yes, I am hoping that that will be, that'll help. Can you tell the judge what kind of person Ricardo Torres is? Ricardo is a is a person very kind hearted. Sometimes back in the past, drugs they get the best of him, but he has changed. He was 
I don't know what he was doing. I don't, I'm not with him every point of the day, but most of the time he is with me because we lived, you know, not even a mile apart. So as far as cooking me meals when I'm on my medicine and I cannot get up and do things for myself, he's a big asset to me when it comes to that. All right, state. Nothing to say, Judge. All right. Uh, how old are your children? 16 and 19. All right. And do you have any brothers and sisters? I know you, you said he was your older brother. Yes, I have other brothers and sisters that are married and they're gone. Most All right. Of them live out of the states. All right. Do you have any other sisters or, or brothers who live in Bear County? Uh, yes, I do. Oh, how many? I have two sisters that are living in Bear County, but we have no, you know, once my mom and dad died, family just kind spread. of spread out. And he's the only one that's really there most of the time. All right. Thank you so much for coming in to testify. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Call your next witness. Call my client. Judge, my client's hard of hearing, so I'm going to have to kind of speak up. Oh, no. The court reporter would appreciate that. Can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God? Yes, ma'am. All right. You can lower your hand. You may proceed. Could you state your name, please? Ricardo Torres. And Ms. Torres, uh, you're here today because you entered a, a guilty plea. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And then you did you did a, a pre-sentencing investigation. Do you recall that? Yes, sir. And on that pre-sentencing investigation, you'd indicated that you were just holding the drugs that they found in your shoe for it somebody was, else. It was my eyes. Okay, well, hang on. Let me ask you a question. Oh, well, he said it was his eyes. Right, right. Okay. And that's where I was going. Judge. All right. Thank uh, you. You take full responsibility for having those drugs in your possession. Yes, sir. And you're asking the court to put you on probation so that you can do outpatient treatment. Yes. And you feel that you would benefit from that. Yes. Why? Because I need some help. I, I think I can overcome this drug because I was just using these drugs and I'm really using my mind to do nothing. Just sitting at home and just carrying on like a, like a lost person. Do you understand how using drugs affects your ability to care for your sister who has cancer? Yes, sir. And is it a positive or a negative uh, effect on, on your care for your sister? Oh, it's not. And, and because of that, you asked the court to, to grant you your application? Yes, sir. Thank you. I'll pass. Any questions? No, Judge. All right. So why were you stealing from HEB? I just saw them drugs, I guess. I just put it in my pocket and walked out. Is there anything else? No, Your Honor, I rest. All right. Court will hear argument. State. Uh, Your Honor, the state's primary concern from the beginning has been since prior criminal history, specifically the Agus Old Deadly Weapon case uh, that he was discharged from CDC in 2014. Uh, I do believe he has been revoked on probation previously, so that would be another uh, concern of the state. So that's why we're opposing his application for probation. All right, defense. Judge, Mr. Torres is 66 years old. Uh, he talked to probation. He was honest with probation. He tried to minimize uh, the drugs in his possession, but at the same time, he's here today telling the court that they were his and that he's, he's trying to take full responsibility for his, uh, his actions back on that day. Um, Based on, on his input and his discussions with the probation officer, they've recommended that he would be a, would benefit from outpatient. And we'd ask that you order him to outpatient and any other recommendations that the probation officer would have made. But please give him his application for probation so he can care for his sister. All right, Mr. Torres, here's the issue the court is having. Your criminal history starts in 1977. And you have been on probation before. You were placed on probation in 1979. Uh, that probation was terminated. You were placed on probation in 1991. That probation was revoked. And I know since it was the 90s, if you had drug problems, people were trying to have you address those issues. Yes, ma'am. Then in 1986, you were given probation. And it was revoked and you were paroled. And again, I know with parole, they still give you help 
for issues that you have. Then uh, you had another case where you were sentenced to eight years, and that's the aggravated assault that the state has brought to the court's attention. Uh, I'm going to deny your application, going to find you guilty, sentence you to three years in the prison, give you credit for any time served, and I'll request the therapeutic community for you. Therapeutic community will help you with any drug issues you have. It will not increase the length of time that you are on probation. Do you understand? Showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? You need to say yes or no. Yes. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? That's either yes or no. Yes. All right. We can go off the record. Mr. Torres, you're getting into the part of the criminal field, I would say, or the legal system field, where now you will be marked as a habitual. So if you continue to pick up criminal cases, in some instances, your range of punishment could be up to 20 years, depending on if it's a state jail felony or not. And in some instances, if it's not a state jail facility, if you pick up another third degree felony or second degree felony, your minimum, minimum sentence is going to be 25 years because you're going to be a habitual. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. You're going to have to do better. If you want to care for your sister, then you got to do what you need to do. And you can't come to court using your sister needing your help as a benefit to you. Do you understand? All right. Good luck to you. Yes. All right. Latoya Dowden. Court is calling 2019 CR 8625 W state of Texas versus Latoya Dowden. Can I parties announce for the record for the state? Defense. I'm sorry, defense. And are you Latoya Marshall Dowding? Yes, I am. Showing you what's entitled motion to revoke community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, I did. Are you the same Latoya Marshall Dowden who was placed on community supervision in 2019 CR 8625W for the offense of harassment of a public servant? on August 7, 2019 for a term of three years and extended for a total of one year. Is that you? That is me. All right, state. Yes, Your Honor. Violated condition number five in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Victoria Michelle uh, Dowden, did then and there fail to report to the supervision officer as directed for the months of March and April 2023 in violation of condition number five. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True. Neither of any violated condition. Any objection? No. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number five, the court could find it true, grant the motion, and sentence you to five years in prison and up to a $1,500 fine. Did you understand? Yes. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to a violation of condition number five? Yes. Even though I do have kind of excuse, uh, I was I was kidnapped. Oh, well, just one second. So what we'll do is first, I need to know if you're still going to plead true to that, knowing I could sentence you to five years in prison. And then if the answer to that is yes, then I'll hear your explanation, okay? So the first thing I need to know is, did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number five, the court could find it true, grant the motion and sentence you to five years in prison and up to a $1,500 fine? Yes. Yeah. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number five? You can plead to other violations if you want to another violation. No. All right. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number five? Yes. Court will find violation of condition number five true. Is there an agreement? Yes, there is, Your Honor. And that agreement is to revoke the individual off for probation and alter and amend her underlying sentence to three years in CDC. Is that the agreement? Yes, Judge. Ms. Dowding, are you asking the court to follow that? Yes. All right. So I'm, I've looked through the previous conditions that were recommended 
and it was to place her on the mentally impaired offender caseload. So did she qualify that for that or no, uh, Ms. Abrams? Because I'm wondering if there's some mental health issues going on here. There, there could be, Judge. Um, we were talking length about, about where she is you know, right now. And you know, she's, she's got a lot of credit for the time served for a I mean, three-year sentence that you imposed should you go along with the agreement. She's pretty much already eligible for parole. All right, do you think she's competent? I believe she is. I mean, she's, she's had conversations over and over. I visited her three times before today's hearing. Um, you know, she, she, we did talk about uh, the report that there's those other uh, allegations in the motion that you know, are substantive as well. But this was the most innocuous of the ones to plead true to in order to, you know, to get to the agreement that the state has offered. But if you see another alternative with regards to continuing her, you know. Well, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out because I like for people to have had at least have been given the opportunity to have the tools. And if she hasn't been given the opportunity to have the tools, well, then it would not be fair, true. I think, for to the court to revoke. But if she's been given the opportunity, then I'm leaning towards following uh, your agreement with the state. I think that would be her, her preference after talking with her and having her understand that she's likely eligible for parole already. Okay. Yeah, I can show that she was evaluated for DVRF um, back in 2021, but she did not meet the medical um, criteria due to back in the future. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I have pictures, no more. As far as the mental health, um, I can present the And I'll show the document to both uh, state and defense. to confer with the state to make sure that they have all the discovery. Oh, no, I'll bring him in when we do that. That was the initial court saying that she would um, be further evaluated with the Center of Her Services, and this is the final report, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, state and defense. I don't know if you all want to speak with her about this, um, but from reading those reports, I think the process was to get her to Mick because of the DDRF. She didn't apply. I mean, she didn't qualify because of the seizures. So if you all want to discuss with probation, Outpatient treatment, and she just never attended. 
All right. Counsel, would you like to discuss that with your client? If you want to discuss it, I will give her a choice. I can continue her on probation, but she'll be extended and they can see about making sure she has the mental health treatment she needs. Of course, if she doesn't show up for mental health, then we're going to be back here on a motion to revoke and it will be notated on the court's docket sheet that she had an opportunity but didn't follow through. That's fair. So if you all want to uh, discuss that, okay, and uh, speak with probation to see if they have any ideas because it may be a matter of her uh, staying in custody to be reevaluated or whatever is needed. All right, thank you. Uh, we have an interpreter here. Oh, okay. Hi. It's always great to see you. It's my pleasure. Always. Oh, you want to go around? Yeah, I was going to have you leapfrog over everybody who's here. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no, no problem. How's it going? Oh, great. It's Friday Eve, so that's good. Yes. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. All right, I'm going in order. Um, John Dominguez. Judge, I did include some letters for the court to consider. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing, sir? Well, thank you for putting dates on I everything. Those for me? They're not. <laughs> next, next round. Okay, okay. Okay. So. Let's do it. <laughs> You guys. All right, this is PSI, correct? Yes, Judge. All right, State, have you received the defense's letters before we go on the record? Yes. That's All right, any objection to the court reviewing those? Yes, All right. All right, we're going to go on the record. I need everyone to please whisper. Court is calling 2022 CR 1725, State of Texas versus John A. Dominguez. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Travis Banks from the state of Texas. Charles Funk from Mr. Dominguez. Are you Mr. Dominguez? Yes, ma'am. You entered a plea of no contest on May 22nd, 2023 to the offense of indecency with the child by contact. According to the plea bargain agreement, punishment is to be assessed at a cap of 10 years. There are no applications. And this is to run concurrent with the case out of Lavaca County. Uh, there's to be chapter 62 compliance, no contact with the complainants. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report state? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes, Judge. Any objections to the PSI report state? No objections. Defense? No, Judge. All right. Uh, state, do you have any witnesses? State has no witnesses, Your Honor. Defense, any witnesses? No, Judge, just argument. All I right. I have a chance to read the letters. Yes. And just give me three minutes to read the, the letters submitted by counsel. Thank you, Judge. One is from Alyssa Molina. The next letter is from Yolanda Dozat, D-E-A-U-Z-A-T. The next letter is from Eric Gonzalez. I'm sorry, Eric Rodriguez that the court is reading. All right, the court will hear argument. State. Um, Your Honor, uh, State would like to point out, and, and the court has reviewed the, the PSI and the stipulations in this case. Yes. Um, the state will just cover some of the more high points of that. Um, sexual abuse started when the complainant was seven years old. Um, she said she was forced to touch the defendant at that age. Um, it continued and got worse as the defendant would touch the complainant's breath and pubic region. Um, the complainant uh, specifically recalls the defendant penetrated her at least three times with the penis. Um, that uh, the complainant, Skyland Dominguez, uh, suffered trauma and, and had to go to Faraday um, for mental health uh, you know, treatment. And um, there are serious concerns about um, 
whether she would even be able to testify if, if this case had gone to trial. And, and that's part of why you know we, we came to the unit that we did, um, given the allegations. Um, and so the state would ask um, that you you meet the cap at 10 years. Um, you know, they're, the, the allegations are, are very significant and what happened and what the defendant stipulated to was very significant. Um, and I will point out that that while the, the, the complaint at Skyland had to go to clarity for this treatment because of what the defendant did to her, um, she, she said that um, the defendant abused her while she was at clarity. Um, well, getting, somebody needs to talk to Clarity then. And, uh, and uh, Your Honor, um, the state is asking you to, to meet the cap at 10 years um, and sentence the defendant to 10 years in TDC. All right. So, so just a second. Are you saying that the complainant was at Clarity, which is a facility, and you're saying that somebody from Clarity allowed him to go into the facility? Um, is there is, proof of that? That is the understanding, yes, is there proof of that? That's what the complainant has said in the in the report. Yeah. All right, because the court's understanding is that anybody who goes to Clarity, if you're going to visit someone, even if you're a parent, you have to sign in. So is there any thing of that nature? Is uh, somebody planning on suing Clarity because they let somebody in who's charged with this offense to see? Uh, the state is not aware of anything like that. Okay. Counsel? Sorry, Judge. Oh, yes, you may proceed. Oh, on behalf of Mr. Dominguez, Judge, we um we know that the court has read the PSI. We are understanding of the severity of the offense. However, my client, through his plea of no contest, was hoping not to have to put anybody through anything further. Um, he has the support of his family, his mother, his wife, his son. They're all present back here in the back. He um he's asking the court to sentence him to seven years. All right, Mr. Dominguez, anything you wish to say to the court about this offense and why you did what you did? You'd rather not talk, Judge. All right, you'd rather not say anything. All right. And State, you're telling me the complainant has, I'm assuming, mental health issues and some other issues? There are issues, yes, sir. All right, the court is going to find you guilty, sentence you to 10 years in the prison. This run concurrent with Lavaca County cause number 2018-091009-CR, chapter 62 compliance. There's to be no contact with the complainants and the court will give you credit for any time served. Judge, I'll be giving the, um, the clerk some dates from when he was in jail in, in Lavaca County that I believe will be entitled to as well. Okay. Sean, you was entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? You need to speak up. Yes, ma'am. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, You'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, we can go off the record. Here's the thing. When this happens, guess what? Someone's childhood is ruined. They will never be a child again because of what you did. When you go to the prison, you need to sit there and think about it. You understand? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Don't be excused. Yes. All right, the parties who are here off docket on Montoya, could somebody please, I don't know, lately, am I asking for too much? Could somebody, if if you're all gonna write, could somebody do it legibly? That's all I'm asking for. Or either, you know, type it up and present it to me because on this motion, both of you are saying something completely different. Yes. So, and if y'all would, uh, not right in the block letters. All right. Can we uh, make it easier? It would be all right. Uh, oh, yes. To Judge Nahara, and that would give me time to type something up and give to him. Yes, sure. Or if you want to type it up and bring it back to the court, I'll read it. 
I have to go up to Austin on a case okay. tomorrow. But if it's all right with you, Judge, then I can just work it out and just type something up. And yeah, type it up and bring it here. We're here. Okay. All right. I will be back until Monday. All right. All right. I'll be here Monday. Okay. God Thanks. willing, as they say, God willing, and the creek don't rise. Yes. All right, Judge. Thank you. All right, who's back here on Annette Zavala? And I'm sorry, just give me a moment because probation is talking. So as soon as she finishes talking, I'll take you back up. Okay. Because I'm just waiting to see what the results are. Yeah, yeah, you'll just have to see. Brittany Brubaker. Council is calling. <laughs> Sorry, council. Go ahead. <laughs> it's very busy today. To no, thank you. Court is calling 2021 CR 87. 28B, State of Texas versus Brittany Marie Brubaker. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Jason Garrahan. For the defense? Doug Campbell. And are you Brittany Marie Brubaker? Yes, ma'am. Showing you what's entitled motion to revoke community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Judge, this is actually Meredith Chacon's case. She's not able to be here. I was going to ask for a short reset so that we can also coordinate with witnesses. All right, and where is Ms. Chacon? In brothels. Doing in trial? Not in trial, but uh, planning on being in trial. In trial to? The, the witnesses we need are, are Ms. Brubaker's parents, who can't be here primarily because her mother is uh, undergoing some medical treatment. No, I, I understand that, and I uh, appreciate that, but I'm trying to figure out why Ms. Chung is not here because she's in New Braunfels working on the case. Yeah, so it's not a jury trial. It is not a jury trial. So is that a felony court? It is a civil court. So it's not a felony court. And as we all know, felony court takes precedent over civil court. I don't know why people are failing to understand this. So uh, Ms. Ch Chacon needs to be here with her at 1.30. Thank uh, you. Thank you. All right, are you ready on your case? I think everybody's ready. I'm taking a jury and you brought this on Monday. Oh, hey. Well, at least it's a jury trial. It's not just you decide it. I'll be there. Habitual evading. Ah, uh, is it on foot or vehicle? Vehicle. They're offering 25. Well, that's the minimum, I guess. Yeah, well, yeah, we have one initial one of the enhancements. So yeah. yeah. All right, we're back on the record in 2021 CR2982B, State of Texas versus Annette Zavala. Uh, what are the drug results? Your Honor, there were, um, the results were positive for methamphetamines and amphetamines. Um, Ms. Zavala provided a list of her prescription drugs, and um, there was one prescription when we looked at the um, drug list for these particular drugs that she was positive for. It was not listed on that drug list. We did do a little Google search to see what we can find out. It says that it can come up false positive, but it does not indicate what it can come up false positive for. Okay. Your Honor, she she swears she did not use any any uh, illegal drugs. She um, it it looks as though hydroxyzine camoate will will make false positives. We have a list of the medications that she's taking, and that's the one that we believe may have created a false positive. Okay. No, I I understand. I was just trying to figure out um, mentally where she is, but. 
my decision wasn't going to be based on whether or not she was positive or negative. It was just uh, whether or not what you all were requesting would be appropriate or not. So my decision on revoke or not revoke was not going to be based upon that. All right. Is there anything else from either party? No, 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 no. All right, the court found violation of condition number 23 true. The court is going to find you guilty. The court is going to revoke. The court will sentence you to 30 days in the Bear County Jail. Give you credit for any time served. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes. All right. You have a limited right to appeal. That right to appeal is as it relates to the allegations in the motion, not the fact that you are in deferred adjudication. Do you understand? All right. They're going to take you into custody. The uh, clerk will see if you actually have the amount of time you have available. Thank you, Your Honor. May be excused? You may be excused. All right, are the parties? Yes. Will Baker. Mm -hmm. Meredith just I texted her, let her know she's supposed to be here at 1.30. She has a three-week long standing appointment with the ME on a murder case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll wait for her when she gets here. Thank you. Are the parties ready on Robert Shanahan? Yes. All right, Mr. Shanahan, if you can unmute. Okay. You're unmuted. Thank you so much. All right. Have you talked to the state about the discovery? Yes, Your Honor. Do you know if you have all the discovery or no? Um, there were some videos uh, that we believe were taken at the bar. However, the state's told me that those videos don't exist. Um, I relayed that to Tracy. She's downstairs in the 186th in trial. Okay. So there is no other outstanding discovery? No, Your Honor. I, I don't believe that there is. And defense hasn't told me that they, they think there's outstanding discovery. No, Your Honor. That was the only issue. Okay. And state, were you able to give an offer to the defense? Yes, Your Honor. I would ask that uh, all the parties appear in person at the next setting. All right. Ms. Ferguson? On Shanahan, can you reset this in three weeks? And every Mr. Shanahan, you'll need to appear in person in Bear County. Okay. And I'm going to give you a date. August 17th. All right, August 7th. Now let's do it before August 17th. All right, August 14th. All right, see you and on August 14th at 9 a.m. in court. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Is that it? Yes, that's all. Okay, thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you, you too. Who is here on Myra Gallegos? Hello. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. How are you? All right. I cannot complain. That's good. It's uh, Friday Eve. <laughs> <laughs> if I say it enough, it'll feel like a Friday Eve. Yeah. All right. Who is the prosecutor on Myra Gallegos? Um, Hi, what's happening in this case? Uh, Judge, so I just looked on discovery. There was a notice of additional discovery that was filed by one of our file clerks. Uh, we got blood discovery. It should be at the portable window. Okay. All right, were you able to tender an offer? Uh, I believe we previously tendered an offer. Okay. All right, Ms. Ferguson, yes. on Gallegos, set this in one month for a plea deadline date.
Okay. August 24th is your plea deadline date. Just sign the reset form and you're excused. On that date, you need to let the court know whether or not you're accepting the state's offer. Do you understand? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. May I be excused? Yes. Yes. Is there audio with the video or no? No. Oh, let me see if I can do it here. All right, let's see what happens. Yeah. Okay, we're going to see what happens here. If I have another place to put anything. Ah. And let's see how we go. Who's here on Mario Aguilar? Good morning, Judge. Good morning. Council's present. Just wanted to approach and give the court an update. We have the, uh, if you don't recall, Your Honor, this was a plea bargain that we were uh, in the middle of, uh, which has immigration yes. uh, ramifications. So we have the public defenders. Yes. Judge, I had uh, requested additional information on this client. Uh, I'm sorry, requested what? Additional information, immigration paperwork from his family. I haven't got it. He said that his family did send it to me. Um, 
I haven't been able to complete the puzzle yet. All right, is your family here in Bear County? Yes, ma'am. All right, so do they have the documents with them still or no? Yes, ma'am. All right, so we're going to recall this uh, for Monday. Your parents can come here and bring the documentation. Yes. Judge, um, I have a vacation letter on file. I'll be on Florida with the family next week. Uh, maybe please do it on the 8th or 10th. Okay. Ms. Ferguson, can you recall this on the 8th or 10th? That's what he's requesting. Just, if, um, for the exchange of the paperwork, does counsel have to be present? I don't have to be present. No, he does not. Okay. All right, you know what, Norma? Recall this back then for Monday. And you need to have your parents here on Monday or counsel talk to the parents. Have Thank you for thinking of that. Talk to the parents, have them come here on Monday to deliver the documentation that she needs. All right, and then Ms. Ferguson will put his actual case on the 8th, but his parents need to be here on Monday to give her the documentation. So do two days, Monday and then week. Yes. All right, is there anything else? Nothing further, Judge. All right, thank you. Appreciate you. And counsel, if you'll make sure you get in touch with his parents to have the documentation. No. Sorry. Yeah. There's a couple of Who's here on Johnny Aguirre? I am your Yes, where's Mr. Aguirre? All right. Mr. Aguirre, before we go on the record, you have a violation report. I'm sorry, you're whispering. Yes, ma'am. All right, why are you not making your appointments with pretrial services? Um, I, I had I had made an appointment with my outpatient and, and I was doing my callings, but I had I had lost my phone with all my information and everything, and I still I still don't have one to this day. But um, he gave me all the information. He said I can do it through email, via email. So um, I'm gonna get a phone on the first of the month. I have some friends that's gonna help me get one. That's correct, Judge. Um, he notified me that he lost his phone even for this hearing. I emailed him, so that's how he was able to get access to that. But uh, I did show him the violation report, Judge, and he did call Ms. Angelica Sosa, the pretrial officer, mm -hmm. and left his email as well as the number. It'll be It's going to be the same number, but he just needs to get it operational again. That's what he's talking about, August 1st. I did notify him about his uh, misdemeanor county court 6 court date, August 29th. And here he has a court with his honorable court, August 21st as well, Judge. So uh, we're going to get him on the same page with that. Uh, I told him if there's any, any issues in the future, contact me and I can put him in contact with pretrial as well. Obviously, that's, you know, his responsibility at the time, Judge. But uh, at this time, we're, we're, we're trying to get him into treatment, some help and, and considering uh, exploring the possibility of a specialty court, uh, maybe a drug courts. Drug court is that capacity. If people want to call their legislatures or 
talk to commissioner's court and say they need more funding so they can have more probation officers, more treatment providers, then that's what I would suggest. That's that judge or mental health court with Judge Huff or uh, possibly uh, mental health court Judge Ron Hell. There's different avenues that we can explore, I believe, Judge. Uh, but ultimately, I believe this is an individual identifying as needing help. Uh, but in terms of his violation, Your Honor, I, I don't foresee there being any future issues since Mr. Aguirre now knows uh, the procedure uh, that he needs to show up and he needs to be in contact with people because if not, it's only a matter of time before warrant issues. When's the last time you used drugs? No, uh, you need to tell me when is the last time you used drugs? Absolutely. Oh, and here's the thing. You need to be honest with me. Because if you're not, and I don't think you're being honest, you know what's going to end up happening? You're going to get a drug test today, and I'm going to find out anyway. So your attorney's trying to get you help. I'm trying to get you help. I'm sure the state is trying to get you help. But nobody can get you help if you're not going to be honest. So when is the last time you used drugs? And what were you using? All right. So he needs to be in treatment quick, fast, and hurry. And... What I'm going to do, I'll continue him on his bond, but he has seven days to comply and you need to be in outpatient treatment and you need to set an appointment. He needs to be in an appointment with Miss um, Sosa yes, sir. before those seven days. If he is not, what's going to end up happening, I'm going to get another violation report. I'm going to hear it. And there may be a chance that you're not going to be on bond anymore. You understand? Yes, sir. So who are you with through outpatient treatment? She, he's, uh, he's needing to make contact with officer Sosa to get that uh, referral process. And I'm going to do uh, sober meetings. And it's going to be 90 meetings in 90 days. All right. Do you have all the discovery in this case? Um, I'm still sifting through, Your Honor. Uh, at this time, it looks to be in order, but uh, I will have a for sure answer for the court um, around that the first court date, August 21st, Judge. I'll, I'll notify the prosecutors if there's anything outstanding between now and then. All right. So you're set for August 21st? Here, yes, Your Honor. All right. I'll see you back on August 21st. Uh, Norma? They're already set for August 21st. Can you give Mr. Gary another reset form because he's saying he lost certain things? Yes. All right, we'll see you on August 21st in council. I'm going to turn this over to the clerk. So if you want a copy of the court's order, you can um, get a copy from the clerk. Yes, Your Honor. Not a problem. I appreciate it. Upon executing the, the reset form, may be excused? Yes. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. It's good to see you. Uh, yes, I do have the file on this case. When our, when you are ready on doubting, just let me know. Okay. Ms. Dowden, if you come forward, please. All right, we're going to go back on the record and 2019 CR 8625W, State of Texas versus Latoya Marshall Dowden. Have you all had a chance to confer with probation? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sure. All right, so what are you all requesting? That she would like the opportunity uh, to take advantage of mental health opportunities that are available to the probation department. I talked to her at length about it. She understands what's going to be expected of her and uh, believes that it's in her best interest to take advantage of moving forward in the life. All right, state. Uh, we, I conferred with both defense and uh, probation and I'm in agreement with whatever probation is requesting, Your Honor. All right, probation, what are you requesting? Your Honor, if we could ex extend the term of her probation and alter a name for Nick, caseload, um, that will give her an opportunity to get all of the um, services that 
we have available for mental health. All right, and how, how long are you uh, requesting the extension? One year, two years? I would say two years, Your Honor. All right. And do you have a place to stay? No. So you're homeless? Right now. All right. But I'm, I, I have asked my grandmother times and times again, and uh, she had um, said no, um, and because um, she's scared that I'm out to get her, and I'm not. All right, so then you, you're not allowed to stay with your grandmother, okay? okay. So that's, that's going to be off the table. Connor, if I may, mm -hmm. it will be much easier if we keep her in custody for all of the evaluations. Once she's seen with the Center for Health Care Services, I'm sure they can help with some type of housing. All right, I'm going to have you remain in custody for your evaluations. Uh, how long do you think that will take? Um, within 45 to 60 days. All right, so I'm going to have you remain in custody for the evaluations. Mm -hmm. And what I can tell you, I know 45, 60 days seems like a lot of time, and it is. But guess what? You had agreed to do three years in prison. So whether you were doing the 45 days or 60 days in prison, you're going to do it anyway. And the fact that you'll be waiting at the jail for 45 or 60 days, you will still be getting credit for that time. You understand? So uh, this is your attorney, the state, probation, and myself trying to help you. Uh, deal with your mental health issues because otherwise what will end up happening is you will go to prison, do your time, come out, and then you're going to be right back here. And who knows, I may have won the lottery, enjoying my best life on a beach. The parties <laughs> that you see here may not be here. You may end up with different people and there may be a different outcome. You understand? All right. So I'll deny the motion, alter man conditions to extend for two years, uh, Mick caseload, while in custody, she used to do her evaluations while in custody and there to look for housing for her. And if when you are released, if there is any issue and you feel as though probation is not addressing it or maybe you lose your paperwork and you forget, you can always come back to this court and talk to me. OK, OK. <laughs> all right. Is there anything else you need? No. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And then on Gallegos, just give me a few moments and we'll take that up. I just need to look at a couple of things. John Klosna. Good morning. How are you doing? Well, Your Honor, thank you. It's good seeing you. Always amazing seeing you. Oh, thank you so much. I hope everything is okay with the, well, I don't want to say okay, but I hope everyone is doing the best they can. Yes, we are. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'm going to call 2021 CR 5795, State of Texas versus John Leal Klosna. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Uh, Travis Banks of the State of Texas. Defense. Adele Silver for the defense. Are you John Leal Klosna? Yes, ma'am, I am. Going to show you what's entitled Motion to Enter Adjudication of Guilt and Revoke Community Supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Yes, did sir. you understand it? Yes, I did, ma'am. Are you the same John Leal Klosna who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2021 CR 5795 for the offense of assault of a pregnant person on August 31st, 2021 for a term of five years? Is that you? Yes, ma'am. All right, state. Violated condition number seven, on or about the 30th day of April 2023 in Wilson County, Texas. The defendant, John Leal Klosna, departed Fair County without the written permission of the court and or the supervision officer in violation of condition number seven. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True, ma'am. The state will waive and abandon the other allegations. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number seven, the court could find it true? Find you guilty, sentence you up to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine? Yes. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number seven? Yes. 
court will find violation of condition number seven true. Is there an agreement? Yes, Your Honor. The agreement, um, should the court follow it, is to deny the motion and to alter and amend the conditions to add um, hostility and aggression management course and uh, the family violence impact panel. Um, and those with those additional conditions, that is the All right. Why are we needing hostility management and anger course and family violence impact panel when he was supposed to be doing the BIPP course? He has finished the BIPP course. It was finished last year. Yes, and then um, the new, there's a new allegation of a new number one in Wilson County. It is still pending. So why should I continue him on probation? I don't understand. He leaves the county without permission. I'm not even gonna consider the fact that there is a pending case in Wilson County because you all didn't go on that. But I do have the state and you all agreeing to hostility management uh, course and the family violence impact panel live. So I'm trying to figure out why shouldn't I not just send him to prison? Well, he has completed many of the things that he had to complete and he's only two years in. So he has three more years to go on his probation. Why is he leaving the county without permission? It was 25 minutes from his home. I mean, te- technically it still is out of the county, but it's 24 hours, 25 minutes from his home for a um, family function with his family. So. State? And you're right. I think in the hostility and aggression management course, they, they do teach some different skills than, than you learn in the uh, batteries intervention course. And, and I think that maybe with these new skills, um, they could serve the defendant well and, and that he could complete the rest of his probation successfully. All right. This is what the court will do. Is there anything you wish to say, sir? Uh, ma'am, uh, um, I apologize for my actions and I won't, I won't mess up again. Uh, if you please can give me this opportunity to prove to you that I, I can do better. I will, ma'am. All right, this is what the court will do. Court will deny the motion, alternate main conditions to include hostility management course, family violence impact course live panel, and 10 days in the Bear County Jail as a condition. All right, so you're going to go into custody today, serve your 10 days in the Bear County Jail. And what you need to remember is you have to follow the rules of the court. Do you understand? Yeah. All right. So immediately upon your release, you need to get in touch with your probation officer. And you need to remember you're not allowed to leave the county. You understand? Yes, ma'am, I do. And you need to remember that the rules of this court are the rules of this court because this contract is not between your attorney and the state. This contract is with the court. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Good luck to you. All right, just give me a moment. I'll I'll take it up. Let me just look at this very quickly. All right, everyone, I'm taking a five minute break to review a document. Uh, Jason, 
Can I see you and Mr. Cavanas? And you guys can come around back this way. Oh, come back here. Yes. I think I'm in the right place. Do you need a break? Oh no, go ahead, take your five minute break. You sure? Okay. Who's her, Michaela Guerra? All right, Mr. Hayek. I'm not here, you're on. No, 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 I, you're right behind the court reporter. So we're about to go on the record, but I'm like, you're, you're ready to go. Are y'all ready to proceed on this motion? Uh, yes, sir. we're gonna be pleading not true and requesting a contested. All right, Ms. Ferguson, I need a contested hearing setting on Michaela Guerra, please. And how many witnesses or how long are you all expecting this to last? Uh, an hour. Okay. They're saying an hour. I can do it August 31st. All right. Your contested hearing will be August 30. Norma, can you check that date? Am I supposed to? Let me see what's on my calendar. I think there's something on my calendar. It's a Thursday. I don't have anything on this calendar. Just one second. Oh, we're good. And Judge, if I want a copy of the probation's discovery, do you want me to file a motion? I know it's your file, it's not the state. So I want the chronos and I want the lab. Uh, uh, you speak to probation if they're willing to allow you to view that and have that, uh, then they will do that. If not, then I will issue an order. Okay, I'll, I'll file a Of course, it'll need to be a protected order. Sure. All right, we'll see y'all back on August 31st. Thank you. Please. You're welcome. And states, you all should have the link. All right, and 
Diana, if you want to take your break, because they're going to take this up next. And I don't know how long it's going to be. If you want to take a five minute. Okay. Yeah. Like the actual official one. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, but she's looking at that one. Okay. But it's an official record. Mm -hmm. Judge, I, I have it up. I don't know if you want me to share it right now. Oh, we can see if the share screen works. Okay. But in order to do it, of course, you're going to have to start your video. I have to post quickly, got one. Yes. Apologize for being late. This is the third time this week I haven't had notice to go in court. No problem. Well, I consider it a huge problem. I have an MTR, this gentleman. Probation wants to give him sad if he doesn't want that. So I'm going to see what the DA recommends. All right, sure. So we are here. Oh, sure. Just talk to them. All right, it's working. Yes, yes. And so. Take it off. Yes, we're going to take a five minute break so the court reporter can have a short break, then we'll come back. And Deputy Laura, I'm going to take a five minute break.
She's in the box, Your Honor. All right, so I'm going to take up her, and then afterwards we'll do your client, Gallegos. Um, just one moment. All right, can I get the following, Christine? Um, Lorraine Efron's car. It's Christine Hernandez. All right, Christine Hernandez, come up. Oh, I'm sorry, counsel, you're on this side. All right, what's happening with this case? I think at this point, we'll have to request a hearing, a uh, contested hearing. Okay. And uh, uh, she believes that Robert Bauer has been retained, and I've been in contact with him. He's going to confirm it. Yes, yes with you, no with me. <laughs> you know, one way or another. All right, let's see if he's been retained. And if it's going to be a contested, we'll do it today. Okay. All right, because the allegations in the motions are her not reporting. So, all right, we're going to call Mr. Maurer. So, you're going to sit in the box and we're going to call Mr. Maurer and either he's been retained or not. Who is here on Adam Sancho? Where is he? In the box. All right. Have you talked to him? And then have you talked to him? I have, Your Honor. But he's waving at me right now. Have you talked to the state? I have. Oh, he's waving at you for some reason. If you want to take that up. Sure. All right. Then we're going to go on Mr. Gonzalez. Are parties ready? All right. Are you ready on Gonzalez? No, no, no. Yes, sir. We're ready. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, the court is calling 2021 CR. 9984 State of Texas versus Jose Gonzalez. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Jason Garahan, Your Honor. Defense? Alfonso Cabanas for defendant Jose Gonzalez. And are you Mr. Gonzalez? Sure. All right, you're going to need to keep your voice up so that the court reporter can hear and so that I can hear. You entered a plea of no contest to count one for the offense of murder on June uh, 13. According to the plea bargain agreement, punishment is to be assessed at a cap of 35 years in the prison. There's an affirmative finding of deadly weapon. And there are two cases that are being taken in consideration. Those cause numbers are 2021 CR 9982 and 2021 CR 9983. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report state? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? I have, Your Honor. Any objections to the PSI report, State? No, Your Honor. Defense? None from defense, Judge. All right, State, do you have any witnesses? Not for uh, the state's Defense, any witnesses? Yes, Judge, only Mr. Gonzalez, but I don't know if the court wants to allow him to talk or... However you wish to do it, if, if I'm going to swear him in, if he's going to be doing it by narrative and the state has no objections, then we can proceed by narrative. And we can do that, Judge. All right. Narrative. State, will you have any objections to proceeding with testimony um, from the defendant by narrative? Of course, you will have a chance to cross-examine him. Sure, All right. Can you raise your right hand for me, Mr. Gonzalez? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. Yeah. All right. You can lower your hand if you'll state your name for the record, please. Jose C. Gonzalez, Jr. All right. And defense says there's something you wish to inform the court of? You were given an opportunity to talk to the judge 
Well, let me just set it up, Judge. We've had a chance to go over the PSI. Prior to today, you and I have talked about what was going to happen this morning. Uh, and you are aware of it, right? So it is your desire. Okay, I'm sorry. You're going to have to speak up. Court reporter cannot hear. All right, yes. It, it is your desire, Mr. Gonzalez, to talk to the judge um, about the sentencing today and and tell her what it is you feel or what it is you want her to know about the sentencing, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Gonzalez. Judge Boyd, um, I stand before him. Not only you, but the family of the victim as well. Okay, I am so, so sorry, but you're whispering. And I know it's hard, but if the court reporter can hear you, can't hear you and I can't hear you, then what you're saying is not going to make a difference because I can't hear you. I stand before the judge today, ma'am. Not only the judge, but the family of the victim as, as, as well, ma'am. And um, I just want to say... Not only am I embarrassed, but I truly am sorry. And I take in full, you know, I take full responsibility for, for what happened that night. And it, it wasn't intentional. I was under the influence. I made some bad choices and even worse decisions. And I just want the family to know that I, I truly am sorry. This isn't my character. I was out of character this night that this happened. and. I know how I would feel if this would happen to one of my family members. And I just want the family to know that it wasn't me that night. It, like I said, I was, I had some things go wrong in my life and I made bad choices and, and completely I'm sorry for it. I, I can't say it enough or express how truly sorry I am and, and remorseful. And I know that not only do they have to live, not only do they have to live with it, but it's something that I have to live with the rest of my life. And I truly am sorry from the bottom of my heart for everything that I caused and for all this that I brought up and I accept full responsibility. All right. Any other questions for your client? No questions at this time for Mr. Gonzalez, Ron. State? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez, you saw the PSI uh, report with your attorney, is that correct? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, you just need to speak up. Some yes, sir. Thank you. Is there anything that from your statement in here that you would like to retract from what you talked about, about especially about the actual incident that night? Because, because the reason I ask that is because you said today in court that you've taken full responsibility for it. Yes, sir. Now, the problem is, is that in this report, and I'll read from it, it says uh, that uh, the person that you ran over tried to hit you with a tire iron. Yes, sir. And then you also stated that he jumped in front of the truck two different times. Yes, sir. And then the second time is when I ran him over. Yes, sir. But you do realize that he walked in front of that vehicle. I have a video that I'll be showing you to you shortly. And he came over to the passengers, I mean, the, the driver's side. Do you recall that? Yes, 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 sir. And you're in the driver's seat and you drove forward <laughs> and then you backed up. Yes, and then sir. that person, Mario Rinthia, walked in front of the car and got into the grassy area. Do you recall that? I'm sorry, just one second. Excuse me. In the box. If you all cannot whisper, do not talk. We're on the record. You may continue. Do, do you recall that? He got out of the way of the vehicle. He was getting out of your way and you turned the wheel and drove directly over him. Do you recall that? I, I turned the wheel to the right. He was standing in front of the driver's side in, in front of me. And I turned the wheel to the right to try to veer off and go around. But there's only so far because there's a ditch right there okay. that I was put. You saw the video, right? Yeah. You're going to see, sure. you're going to have an opportunity to see it again. Okay. Yes, sir. So I might give you the benefit of the doubt, considering that you're intoxicated at night. Why don't you tell the judge, what were you on that night? Um, nothing. Meth, marijuana, um, I don't even know what else. I'm Xanax? I don't, I don't even remember taking Xanax, sir. But if I was, I was. Also, 
just going to your your record. You you just you just got out of pr uh, prison. Yes, sir. And then this happened. Yes, sir. And so, the way I read this is that you're stating that it was <laughs> the victim's fault that you ran over him. I'm not going to say it was it was all completely his fault, but. I mean, if, if, if it's seen like on, on the video, I try to go around the passenger side. I was trying to avoid a situation that happened at the gas pump period. And that's what I was trying to get away from. So how we, I mean, you just said not all of his fault or possibly his fault. How is it any of his fault? I mean, it's, it's not his fault. I mean, it's, we were both at bad places at you know at even even worse time. And I mean I know he was just changing his tire, but at the same time when I approached him, if I recall correctly, I was I told him like, hey, you know, I wanted to try to get out of there, period. And I, when I asked him for a ride, it, it just I don't know, he didn't, he wasn't, I guess because my demeanor, you know, I had my shirt off, I have tattoos, you know, maybe I was I mean bit, you're you're a gang member, right? No, sir, I'm not. You're not part of the Mexican Mafia. That's no, what it was di dictating in here. I, I understand it was dictated, but no, I'm not. What's the Playboy Bunny behind your ear? It's just a Playboy Bunny. Just a Playboy Bunny? Yes, sir. That's not related to the Tango Ore Holmes at all? No, sir. Okay. The Ore Holmes and the Mexican Mafia. I know, they, they conflict. Let's see people since switch sides. So, you also, do you remember approaching him for the first time? You approached him twice. No, I don't. And so you approached him once, had an altercation with him, you walked to the gas pumps, and then you walked across the road. Do you remember that? No, sir. Do you remember being in the me median with your, your boxers down, your shorts down? No, sir. And, and do you remember walking back and talking to people at the gas pumps again? No, sir. Do you remember going then to the victim's truck when he was on the passenger truck side trying to change his tire? I, when I what I when I remember was when I walked up to him when he was at the driver's side and he was standing there with with that I guess the tire iron in his in his hand. To be fair, he's changing the tire. So what would you have in your hand if you're changing the tire? Uh, I mean I understand that. Well, you stated here that he hit you with it. Do you recall that, or did you, you know, just say he, that? No, I said he he swung it at me. I never said he hit me with it. Okay. Well, because in here it says that he. Okay, yeah, I closed the door and the guy was standing with the, there with the tire on. Is that the individual, the victim that you're talking about? Yes, sir. Did he ever bash on the windows or anything like that, try to get you out of that truck? It's on video, so I, I want to know if you remember. I, I don't remember. I'm not Do you recall saying that uh, there was a, another guy in the truck and he was closing the door and that there was a girl in the truck that you're trying to help? That was the, that was the first that was the first truck that the I first walked truck. on. Now, to be fair, you don't know those people trucks. over there by the gas pumps either. I talked to them and they, they don't know you. Yeah. And it states in here that you you said that you were trying to steal the uh, the truck. Is that right? No, I never said I was trying to steal the truck. You said I told the officers that I was trying to steal the truck, but that's a lie. I told the officer I was trying to steal the truck and I said that's a lie. Yeah. But you know that you weren't supposed to be in that vehicle, right? Yes. And that was not your vehicle. Yes. Judge, at this time, uh, I'd like to uh, use a state exhibit, I believe, number two that was entered for stipulated steps to show and see if you can identify portions of that. Any objection? Uh, no objection, Judge. All right. You may present state's exhibit number two. And Judge, that's on the screen currently. At your computer? Okay, at this time, I'm going to be playing at 2244.04. Sir, do you see that person right there? Yes, sir. And is that you? Yes, sir. And that's you with your shirt off at that, is that correct? Yes, sir. Where are you approaching? Can you see?
Who's that you're approaching, sir? I have no idea. Is that the truck? Can you see what that is? You see that there's a person on a bicycle there too, is that right? Yes, sir. I think. And do you know that individual? No, sir. So he's standing there while you're at that truck. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Did you see yourself walk off there? Yes, sir. Okay. That's the first time you approached the victim at a, at a truck. Now I'm going to 22-50-33. I'm going to start playing it here. Can you see an individual at that truck in a white shirt? We, we just walked around. There's a glitch. Now you're going to see another person walk up right here. You know who that person is? I can't see that good from there. I'm sorry? I'm sorry. I can't see that good from there. Well, I'll tell you, that's you approaching him for the second time, roughly six minutes later, after you left him the first time. You approach and you go to the side of the vehicle. Lights come on. You see the victim walk in front of the truck, go to the driver's side. You know who's behind the wheel at this point? I am. Looking at you. Drive forward where you could have driven off at this point, but you chose not to. You reversed and turned the wheel. Now you have the victim in the middle of the vehicle. He walks off into the grassy area. You turn right and run directly over him. Do you recall that? No, sir. Second portion here. You rammed it into the Texaco. It didn't end up there. You rammed it into Texaco. You'll see you exit the vehicle. Nobody else in that vehicle. Witnesses are going out to check on the on the victim in the middle of the field. You continue to walk inside of the gas station. Do you recall that? Yes, sir. Walking in the gas station, yes. And Joe, there's many different views, but in one particular that I'll be showing to the court is camber uh, angle number 13. And I'll use portions of that. So to save some time for going through every single one of them. But I'll start this at 22, 54, I'm sorry, 22, 53. Do you see yourself on the top of that camera walking by? Sure. And I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this to 22, 54, 30. I'm sorry, 225417. Is that you? Yes, sir. Is this you? Do you know who you're talking to at this point? No, sir, I don't. Talking to officers that have come in to arrest you.
this time I'll fast forward it, Your Honor. I'm starting 225542. As officers approach, you retreat into a small office, and that's where they have to enter, and that's where the cases that are being taken into consideration of you kicking two different officers. Do you recall that? No, sir. So in saying all this and showing you these videos, you state in this statement here that I'm hoping they see the videos and reduce this to a manslaughter. Do you recall that? No, yes, sir. And so you, I mean, at this time, do you believe that this is a manslaughter? No, sir. Pass my witness Defense. Judge, just to clarify a point that I think was just misread by, by the state. In, in reviewing the PSR, I think the statement was, and yeah, this is correct, Mr. Gonzalez. They told the officers that I was trying to steal a truck, but that's a lie. All right, so you never told the pre-sentence investigator person you were trying to steal the truck. It was whoever told them that it was, was a lie. You weren't trying to say that. And then, based on what we saw, Mr. Gonzalez, um, you were under the influence of several drugs, correct? Yes, sir. Nothing further, Judge. State, any further questions? All right. Any other witnesses, defense? Not from defense, Your Honor. All right, then the court will hear argument. Uh, state? We'll reserve for close, yeah. Defense? Thank you, Judge. I think what we just saw, Your Honor, on both video and what we heard from Mr. Gonzalez are the unfortunate consequences of an individual who was heavily, heavily intoxicated by multiple drugs. If the court reviews the PSR, it will see that prior to this incident, Mr. Gonzalez did not have any uh, assaultive offenses. It was nothing but drug use for which he did his time and was on parole. From the beginning of my representation of Mr. Gonzalez, Your Honor, I want the court to know that Mr. Gonzalez has been very apologetic for that eat for that night, for the death that he caused, and for the terrible loss that it caused to that to the victim's family. He's never once, Mr. Gonzalez, he's never once told me that he wanted to fight this case or take this case to trial. Nonetheless, we review discovery. We saw the video, we saw the reports, and it is confirmed through those through the evidence and his testimony that he was heavily intoxicated by use of meth. The court just saw his behavior was erratic. As Mr. Gonzalez said, it's completely out of character for him that evening. But as a consequence of his drug use, Your Honor, uh, there was a person who died and for whom Mr. Gonzalez expressed his, his remorse and also his sorry to, to the family. And I say that judge because I want the court to consider what Mr. Gonzalez said, the PSR, but more importantly, in acknowledging that Mr. Gonzalez from the very beginning accepted his guilt, regardless of what the state asked him or regardless of his answers, you can tell that Mr. Gonzalez is difficulty expressing himself, but I want the court to know that in no way did Mr. Gonzalez ever or today try to minimize his guilt or put the blame on the victim. He accepted responsibility. He told the court he was under the influence of drugs um, and he didn't. And so with that said, Your Honor, I would like the court to consider a, a punishment, thank you. To consider a punishment for Mr. Gonzalez um, of 20 years incarceration. All right, state. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, victim of this case, Mario Renteria, just trying to fix his flat tire. Pulled up in that gas station where he'd been numerous times before. Just uh, in the testimony that he was there quite often to go get a thing before he goes to work or anything like that. that he was a frequent individual that came by there. He was a nice man that he was just there to change that tire. And what ended up happening to him that night is egregious. And this, indiv this individual, Mr. Gonzalez has pled to this case, but the fact is, is that he hasn't answered for the case yet. And the fact is, is that he approached the victim two different times and witnesses would have testified and in the prosecution guide, 
that Mr. Renteria was not aggressive, that wasn't attacking Mr. Gonzalez at all, was trying to get away from him at times. And you can see from the video that the state has provided to the court and shown to the court that the victim walked in front of that car two different times and the defendant had an opportunity to leave in that stolen vehicle if he wanted to leave. But he chose to turn that wheel to the right and run over Mr. Renteria directly. And so in saying that, Your Honor, I want to go over a portion of what the autopsy shows of the damage that the defendant caused. Both femurs, both legs were broken in half. Pelvis had multiple fractures. He had a broken back, mid-back and thoracic. He had a lacerated liver. He had a lacerated lungs. He had a skull fracture. And every single one of his ribs were broken. What is called a collapsed abdominal, where he could not have breathed. So in saying that, Your Honor, 20 years is a manslaughter, 35 years is a murder. This is plain and simple a murder. He knowingly, intentionally drove that vehicle over the victim, and the state would be asking for 35 years, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Gonzalez, I want you to know that um, I always reread stipulations. I always read the PSI report, and... I always keep an open mind in listening to arguments from the defense and also from the state. And I understand that maybe if you had not been using drugs, maybe none of this will would not have happened. We will never know because we have to deal with what we have, to, what we're here for now. And what I'm looking at is the fact that you had someone who is merely trying to change their tire and now they're dead through no fault of their own. So that's an issue. Uh, I know that any time that someone is sentenced to, it's difficult because those are years behind bars that you're not able to do the things that you want to do. You can still see your family, but it's different seeing your family locked up as opposed to being in what they call the free world. But at the same time, there's someone who is no longer with us through your actions and who knows what joy or happiness they were due to bring to this world, but you took their chance away from that. You took the chance of them being able to have more time with their family. You understand? That's either yes or no. Yes, ma'am. All right. So uh, previously the court found you guilty. Uh, the court is going to assess an affirmative finding of deadly weapon, taking consideration 2021 CR 9982, 2021 CR 9983, give you credit for any time served, and the court will sentence you to 35 years in the prison. Showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, All right, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. And because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you uh, have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to your attorney. Do you understand? No. All right. Uh, is there going to be victim impact? Yes, we have to. Yeah. All right. So um, members of the complainant's family are going to speak to you. I require that everyone in this court is respectful to each other. But as you can imagine, I'm sure there is heartbreak. Right? So just internalize what's being said. All right. Yes. Hey, Judge, just to let you know, uh, uh, my advocate, the advocate for the 187 is going to read a letter uh, because the family feels like they don't need to. I don't okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, this is from Jessica Renteria, which is the cousin of Mario Renteria. Um, Jessica feels that Jose Gonzalez should get the maximum sentence for killing her cousin. The entire family will never be the same. We have an empty space in our hearts that we can never get back. The heartache that you caused 
has caused the entire family a sense of emptiness, especially for Mario's elderly parents and siblings who all live in Mexico and are not able to be here. His siblings were not able to say goodbye to their older brother or to be at the funeral for a final goodbye. They can never visit his gravesite to eat flowers or simply talk to him in his final resting place. Mario Venteria Prado has left behind four kids and his two young granddaughters who he will never grow up to see. My, my cousin was a hardworking individual who took care of his family and helped out his extended family when he could. He was a good person who had so much life to live and has been taken away due to a senseless act of violence. I believe in our justice system and know that the right sentencing was done. This next statement is from his daughter, Xenia Ventilla. The morning after August 14, 2021, started with what felt like a real life nightmare. Unwittingly, I have mental replays of every single moment that I have after waking up to the news of what ha happened. The fear, the anguish, the shock, the disbelief, the void, so unexpected and so unimaginably painful. Not enough words could exactly ex uh, describe it. My dad was caring, hardworking, and he respected by many. He was also very intelligent, wise, and attentive. What I loved most, of, most was hearing my dad laugh, and what I admired most was his heart. Seeing my dad smile made me happy, and hearing my dad laugh made my heart smile. His love for our family was like no other. It was undoubtedly the strongest force to feel. He treated me like his little princess, along with my younger sister. He was the first person to check in on me when I wasn't doing so well, and he never failed to show me that he was there for me. My dad loved nature and being outdoors. He loved the rain and the sounds of birds singing. He loved music, his guitar, and his red pickup truck. My dad lives in my heart, and I miss him every single day. I miss his humorous nature. I miss hearing him laugh. I miss seeing him smile. I miss seeing his contact pop up on my phone as he calls. I miss his jokes. I miss the feeling of the love and the safety that he no, provided no. to our family. With. Sorry, just one second. Excuse me, deputy. First row, first row. All right, you may proceed. I'm sorry about that. Life is beautiful and it's full of choices. But sadly, it is chaos written with poor souls who know not peace nor love. Grief is an ugly thing. It's like a gaping hole in your chest that doesn't get better with time. You just live with it. The pain still feels unreal and inhumane, but the love our family feels for my dad is and always will be stronger <laughs> than any evil. Thank you, All right, thank you. I'll share the statement of the one who died and see if they Edward Ramirez. Court is calling 2021 CR 8399W, State of Texas versus Edward Ramirez. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Daniel S. Clark for the state of Texas. Defense. Anton Hag for Mr. Ramirez. Are you Mr. Ramirez? Yes, ma'am. Showing you what's entitled motion to revoke community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Are you the same Edward Ramirez who was placed on community supervision in 2021 CR 8399W for the offense of theft under $2,500 enhanced on September 17, 2021 for a term of two years? Is that you? Yes, ma'am. State? Violated condition number four 
on or about the first day of June, 2023 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant Edward Ramirez defendant there failed to conduct himself in a properly and orderly manner and that he did not comply with the instructions of the supervision officer and court in violation of condition number four. How do you plead to that, true or not true? Mm. Mm. All right, Your Honor, state waives all the violations. Any objections? No, Your Honor, my client's aware of them. He's just that many were very truthful. He wants to explain that to you. All right. All right, do you have any objection to the state's waivers of the other allegations, no, counsel? No. All right. Uh, Mr. Ramirez, did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number four, the court could find it true, grant the motion, and sentence you to one year in the uh, state jail facility and up to a thousand dollar fine? Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number four? You need to speak up. Yes, ma'am. The court would find violation of condition number four true. Is there an agreement? No, Your Honor, we were going open to the court. All right, state, what are you requesting? Uh, stage present one year in the state jail facility. All right, defense. Uh, sir, tell the judge how old you are. You want to raise your right hand for me? Do you solemnly swear? That's okay. That's fun. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. Yes, All right, you can lower your hand, state your name for the record. Defense. Okay, and what is your age, sir? My age is 60 years old. And do you live with your parents right now? Yes, sir. Are you disabled and unable to earn an income? Yes. And do you basically take care of your parents who yes, obviously sir. are older than you? Yes, sir. Are, sure are, are they also infirmed or disabled? They're disabled, especially my mom and my brother. Then nobody wants to take them to the doctor's appointments or nothing. I'm the only one that could have so My probation officer knows. But, but. All right, let's, can we get to the issue of the circumstances surrounding violation of condition number four? Which is why I left the day when I was here in the courts. No. no, I mean, the violation of condition number four, you've pled true, and it is that you, you fail to conduct yourself in a proper and orderly manner. So what is that about? Well, you tell me, what did you do? Nothing, ma'am. I, I just came over here to the, to the court day when I had it on the 1st of June. And then I was, I had gone and ate breakfast that morning. So I, I think I had a, I had to run and I spoke to the lady she was over there. And I asked if I can go to the restroom. And she said, no, you cannot leave the building. So then a guy came over and took my ear analysis. And then I asked her again if I can go. And she goes, just don't leave the building. But the only reason I left the building, man, was because because I wasn't going to come back into the courthouse full of poop on my pants and everything because I did poop when I went to the restroom on myself. So I wasn't going to come smelling the restroom like, like poop, right? So I called my probation officer and I told her that I had an accident here at the courthouse and I wasn't planning on going and embarrassing myself inside the courthouse. And she says, well, I don't know what I can do for you. That okay. was it, man. But All I right. did call. All right. Yes. Any questions for this witness? All right, probation. The recommendation at proba um, probations and at this time is to extend his supervision by 18 months and amend for status followed by aftercare. All right, and state, what are you requesting? One year in the state jail, Judge. Um, the reason for, for that is because he's already shown that he would not listen to the court when directly told to stay for your analysis test. I did stay for your analysis test. I did take your analysis here. In and the bathroom is like that. Your Honor, um, he did in fact submit his ear analysis on that day. It was positive for cocaine. All right, and then he left. And then he left. I don't know how you're able to take care of your parents and you're doing drugs. That's not a good thing. Ma'am, I guarantee you, I did that because I had so much. No, you cannot be taking drugs when you're that. on probation and you cannot be taking drugs and taking care of your parents. I understand that. But and I don't I allow that. people to take care of their parents. It was just that one time. No, it's not just one time. 
And you know how I know it's not just one time? I remember, I remember now, but that day, that time, the first time, it was it was not my urinalysis that they had took. We could get to the point that I knew that I was clean at that time. I know. Here's the thing. This is not the first time that you've used cocaine. The end. Okay. Well, I mean, it's not. So how often have you been using? Not that often. Man. I mean, I get, I get, uh, I get anxiety attacks and I get also, my nerves are too high. I, uh, all right you have a choice I'll, i can sentence you to 10 months in the state jail facility or either i can extend you but you're going to still be in custody because you're going to be sent to sata and that's an inpatient drug treatment can i just get at least uh, a year of, of probation more Extended and then I can I can I can prove to you and I can show you that the judge is not going to put you on probation. It's just not going to revoke you. Be in a incarcerated program no matter what. So, well, how much is that? How long are you requesting that he be extended? Eighteen months. Oh, Eighteen months. All right, I'll deny the motion. Alternate main conditions extend you for 18 months and you're to go to SATA. And there he is not allowed to live with his parents. And you're not allowed to provide care for your, the, your parents because you cannot do that and you are using drugs. Is there anything else he needs? Probation? No, you're not. All right, and he's it to remain in custody until transfer to SATA. Yes, Your Honor. I did Yes. Thank you so much. Go ahead and put the baby. Whatever you say. Cal Hardy. Who is the defense attorney on Cal Hardy? Me, Hello. How are you doing, Your Honor? Oh, I'm doing great. Court is calling 2023 CR 3227B, State of Texas versus Cal David Hardy. Can I help parties announce for the record for the state? Daniel Osborne from the State of Texas. Defense? Bob Hicks representing Cal Hardy. Are you Mr. Hardy? Yes, I am, ma'am. All right. You entered a plea. To theft on a $2,500 enhanced on May 30th. Yes, ma'am. According to the plea bargain agreement, punishment is to be assessed at 16 months in the state jail facility. There's no application for deferred adjudication. The state is opposing uh, your application for community supervision. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report state? Yes, Judge. Defense? I have, Your Honor. Any objections to the PSI report state? No, Your Honor. Defense? None from the defense, Your Honor. Any witnesses state? Uh, no, Your Honor. Defense? No, Your Honor. All right, the court will hear argument. Uh, Your Honor, uh, at least here in this case, there were several cases that were currently being against Mr. Hardy. The state is taking into consideration several of those cases. It's in light of that that we are asking for the 16 months in the free field facility due to the fact that this wasn't his first or, or his only offense. He also does have a prior criminal history. Uh, he has several cases from Bear County and even out of county. Uh, additionally, I had a prior uh, theft under $2,500 enhanced from 2020. Uh, he was eventually, through much difficulty, sentenced to 186 days credit in the state jail facility. So, again, based off the prior history, we'd ask that it be 16. All right, defense, what are you requesting? So Mr. Hart, Mr. Hardy requests that the state consider placing him on community supervision, as it says very clearly in the PSI and in the TAP evaluation. He has had a cocaine habit for the past seven years or so. As a matter of fact, 
when he was taking coke, when he started using cocaine, he quit using the other. He was at the time using methamphetamine and quit using meth because of his cocaine use. It also got him to quit smoking marijuana. I don't think I've ever seen anybody rehab themselves using cocaine, but he admits that he has a drug addict. He admits that he has a problem. And I would request the state give him, consider giving him probation because if we send him to the state jail for his next 16 months, in 16 months, we're going to have somebody back with a drug problem. If the state, if the court would allow him to follow the recommendation on the TAP, which was the substance abuse track when it being tested with the ISF, state ISF, followed by ASP to make sure that the treatments that he received there are working. I believe he, he, he has a, a child who has no castle. He has family who live outside of Bear County. And he had been unemployed for quite some time at the time of this offense. He was high at the time of this offense. And I believe that part of sentencing in the court is for the purpose of punishment, but I believe it's also for rehabilitation. And I believe it's much more constantly congruent with the hope of rehabilitating the party that you put him on probation rather than sending him to the state jail. So. All right, Mr. Hardy, are you able to see the screen with your criminal history? Sorry, I wear glasses, but I, I, I see it now. All right, so in 2016, you were sentenced to 32 days jail for possession of controlled substance penalty group three, less than 28 grams. Yes, ma'am. July 2016, you were sentenced to 28 days for criminal trespass private property. August 23rd, 2016, criminal trespass to private property, you were sentenced to 20 days. October 11, 2016, theft $100 to $750, you were sentenced to 90 days in the jail. Yes, ma'am. February 2017, criminal trespass, private property, 36 days jail. March 16, 2017, criminal trespass to private property, 10 days jail. August 3rd, 2017, criminal trespass to property, 26 days jail. September 2017, criminal trespass to private property, 22 days jail. October 30th, 2017, criminal trespass to private property, 26 days jail. January 1st, 2018, evading arrest or detention, 30 days jail. June 2018, criminal trespass to property. You were placed on uh, deferred adjudication. That was revoked and you were given 60 days. July 11, 2018, public new lewdness, 60 days jail. August 22, 2018, criminal trespass to a building, vehicle, 42 days jail. January 30, 2019, criminal trespass to private property, 30 days jail. May 2020, indecent exposure, 41 days jail. August 2020, criminal trespass to private property. You were given, let me see, that case ended up being dismissed for another. August 11, 2020, criminal trespass to property, dismissed over. May 23rd, 2021, indecent exposure, 80 days. September 20. 21 criminal uh, trespass to private property that was dismissed, indecent exposure dismissed. And I'm assuming these indecent exposures are he's homeless and maybe he's urinating in public. Um, and then you have a possession less than a gram in 2018, dismissed insufficient evidence. September 2019, theft of a person, 90 days state jail. January 2020, theft. Enhanced twenty five hundred dollars, uh, six months in the state jail facility. 
June 2022, evading arrest detention, four months state jail. January 19, 2023, here we are. And then you have this out of state things. June 2011, possession of marijuana, five days jail. January 12, 2012, stealing, eight days jail. And that's from Missouri. Then you go to California. And then Kansas. Yes, ma'am. All right. So I tell that to you, Mr. Hardy. You're not a good candidate for probation, right? You're just going to have to do better with your life. And I will ask that you be placed in the therapeutic community at the at the uh, state jail facility. If you want it, you're going to have to request it, but they will help you with any drug issues you have. And then once you're released, you can go to um, drug places here in San Antonio. They are free. So if you want help, you can get it. But if you don't want it, what's going to end up happening at some point in time, you're going to be a habitual. And if you continue on this vein, you're going to end up spending the rest of your life in somebody's jail, be it California, Lavaca, Oklahoma, Texas, wherever it may be. You understand? So I'm going to deny uh, your application, find you guilty, sentence you to 18 months in the state jail facility, give you credit for any time served. This will run concurrent with cause number 708955. Taking consideration 2023 CR 3616, JN number 2109814, grand jury number 790756, and I request the therapeutic community. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it and did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Uh, do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. And because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you need to speak to your attorney. Do you understand? Yes, All right. We can go off the record. You say you have a child? Yes, ma'am. Richard, you know, just turn one, ma'am. All right. So here's the thing. You need to do better and you need to be an example for your child. If you don't plan on doing better, not using drugs, not committing crimes, then don't be in that child's life because you're going to be a hindrance. You understand? All right. Good luck to you. But Sean, let me know when you need uh, a break. Your Honor, um, I would like to see if I could speak with you offline. Sure. Yes. All right, everyone, we're going to take a brief recess.
All right, the courtroom is starting to, to clear out. Yay. And I know I've said we were breaking at noon, but people are asking to continue. Thank you. All right, Jose Carvajal. Could I see you up here, please? Good morning. Afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. But the good thing about it, it's afternoon, but it's still um, Friday's Eve. There you go. Yeah. Friday, Junior. Yeah. All right. Uh, probation told me they had spoken with your attorney and probation spoke with me. And my understanding is uh, they've had a chance to speak with the prosecutor. And so there may have been some miscommunication. So my understanding is that the state is going to request that the motion be withdrawn. Is that correct? Yes, Judge. So on this case, I understand there was some miscommunication, but you're going to be given new con uh, conditions. You need to sign those. So there will not be any mis miscommunication after today. You understand? Yes, so from here on out, everything you do, you need to ask yourself two questions. You know what those questions are? First question. Any action you take, you need to ask yourself, because this potentially result in me going to the state jail facility for two years. If the answer is yes, you don't do it. Next question, is this something that maybe will result in me going to the state jail facility for two years? If the answer to that question is yes, or maybe, don't do it. You understand? If you have any questions about anything or if there's some confusion, you can always come back to court. If you have an issue, let probation know. If you feel that, that probation is not addressing it, then you can come in and address it with me. You understand? Do you have any questions about anything? All right, good luck to you. And they told me uh, your UA was good. Yeah. Okay. Changes. That's when my daughter was born, so uh, I made a little bit of changes. If I wanted to keep my family, I have to make changes with myself before I can do anything else. So That's good. I appreciate that. You know, I always tell parents, if you have no intention of being a parent that your child would be proud to say, this is my dad, this is my mom, then don't cause chaos in their life. Just let them be on their own, send your child support, but just let them live their life. You understand? So I'm glad that you've made changes. Three kids, it ain't easy, but, mm -hmm. but it's joyful. Yeah. And how old are the three children? Um, one was just this 15 of this month. Of uh, she turned three next month. He's about to be uh, two on the 23rd. And I got uh, my recent one of four months. Oh, that's awesome. When you have little bitty babies that size, it's no always sleep. great because it's, <laughs> but it's no sleep, but it's, but it's no sleep for good reasons. You never want the sleep to be because you told your child to be in at nine and now it's nine oh five and they're not there yet. So it's a good thing. All right. Good luck to you. Okay. Thank you, You're welcome. Excuse your honor. After uh, you yes, after you sign the conditions and make sure uh, there are no miscommunications, all right? Yes, your honor. Roberto Gonzalez. And then Will Brooks, who is your client? Yara Gomez, Judge. All right, if you have them pull that file and I'll take it up after this. Okay. All right, what is happening with this case? Uh, I believe you're here for uh, discovery compliance today, yes. Judge. Yes, 911 uh, call. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so that would that has been purged, but I did, uh, there was a, a video that I don't think uh, could be downloaded that I provided on a disc. Okay. So I believe we have the discovery knowledge and sign, so I think we should be all set with discovery, Judge. All right. And was an offer tendered today or no? Uh, yes, ma'am, there is an offer. All right, Ms. Ferguson, on this case, if I can have a 30-day reset for a plea deadline date. All right, we'll be back on August 24th. At that time, you need to let the court know whether or not you're accepting the state's offer. Do you understand? All right, once you sign the reset form, you're excused. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, if I can see the parties on Kiara Gomez. Did he just? Oh. 
Hello, Ms. Gomez. All right. So my understanding there, I wouldn't say complications, but some things that need to be done in your case. Uh, I've been made aware that you're Native American. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Right. So your attorney is going to make some phone calls to, I, I don't even like the word reservation. Uh, what's another term other than reservation? I think that is the term. I don't like the term, but okay. Um, he's going to make a call to your tribe to see what type of programs they have available for you and then um, make contact with personnel in Eagle Pass to see about that, all right? And we're gonna reset you for 30 days. But if I have the information before then, your attorney will be able to put this back on the docket sooner. I think you told us a week, Judge. Yes, no, I'm just gonna set it for 30 days, but if everything is prepared in a week, all you have to do is call the coordinator and we'll put it on the docket for a week. Okay. All right. And if you all have no answer at that time, we'll still put it on the on the docket when the, within that week. If something happens where nobody's giving you the answer that you want to receive, or if something happens where they say the answer is no, then you can still bring it back in the week. Okay. But this is the 30 day reset is in case you call the reservation or call the people in Eagle Pass and they say, Yes, we can do it, but it's going to take us another week or so. Okay. All right. So, Ms. Ferguson, can you give me a reset on this on 30 days with the notation that the defense counsel can come in at any time to put it on the docket? All right. So we'll do August 24th. And, counsel, if there's any issues and you feel that I can help with the contact with Eagle Pass, or the reservation, just to let me know. Okay. But I, I will say, if you do go over to uh, the CPS court, mm -hmm. I know a lot of the caseworkers over there have had to have contact with the reservations, so they may be able to have a contact person for you. Okay. Perfect. Gotcha. I'll get on that. All right. They'll give you a reset form just in case. And I'm sorry, which native group are you with? Uh, Kikapoon Traditional Tribe of Texas. Okay. All right. Do you need the number? I'm getting. Okay. That's what I'm getting. All right. Oh, uh, counsel. Uh, if you want to call them now, they don't close till five. So she gave me a contact number. Okay. For rehabilitation center with the tribe. I don't, I told her I'm going to get on this call right now. Okay. All right. All right, is there anything else? Not this time, Judge. Okay. All right, thank you. Just thinking if I call right now, it's lunch hour. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, things are done. Thank you. Christine Hernandez. We're ready, Judge. All right. Are you all ready to proceed? We have decided to change our plea to true. All right. Court is calling 2020 CR 9869B, State of Texas versus Christine Hernandez. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Defense. Lorraine Afrin. Are you Christine Hernandez? Yes, ma'am. Showing you what's entitled motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision 
and state's motion to supplement pending motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Um, somewhat. All right, what do you not understand? Like, I'm sorry, what was the question? Um, Have you reviewed the motions oh, yes, to revoke yes, with your attorney? Yes. Do you understand them? Yes, I do. These are, are you the same Christine Hernandez who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2020 CR 9869B? For the offense of prohibited substance in a correction facility, drug, phone, or alcohol on November 10th, 2020 for a period of two years. Is that you? Yes, ma'am. State? Violating condition number two, on or about the fifth day of April 2021 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Christine Hernandez, did then and there illegally use marijuana in violation of condition number two. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True. And Your Honor, we waive and abandon the other violations. All right. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number two, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, sentence you up to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine? Did you understand that? Yes. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number two? Yes. Court will find violation of condition number two true. Is there an agreement? There's not an agreement, Judge. All right. Uh, would you, I don't have a trial court certification on her. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I didn't do that. That's okay. Oh, I'll put it on there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We are back on the record. Uh, State, what are you requesting? Your Honor, we're requesting that the court follow probation's recommendation, which is to uh, uh, adjudicate the defendant guilty uh, and send her to SATA for between 120 and 180 days, followed by aftercare. All right. And what are you requesting? We're requesting to be continued on deferred and be ordered into intensive outpatient treatment, uh, which he's very motivated for. I mean, one, one thing I discussed with her was also some kind of mental health support. Mm -hmm. um, I think she agrees and does yes. feel that she needs that. And it appears to me that she would benefit greatly. She's never been evaluated. I'm not sure she has an actual diagnosis of any mental health disorder, but it does appear that some kind of mental health support is warranted here. Um, her sister and daughter are here, um, oh both her daughters, um, in, in support of her. She does have family support. Her daughters do rely on her quite a bit. She currently resides with her mother and helps her mother there and helps her daughters. And so one thing that is causing her a great deal of anxiety standing before you today, of course, she knows this probation has been a mess. Yeah. Um, but that her family does rely on her quite a bit. And um, I, I think she would, if the court would allow, just like to say a few words to the court about uh, what she's requesting. All right. Can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth so help you God? Yes. All right, you can lower your hand, state your name for the record. My name is Christine Hernandez. Yes, what did you wish to say? Okay, I know that me being on probation and it was a second chance for me and I did mess that up completely. Um, 
I wasn't thinking of anybody but myself. And I wasn't thinking of my kids. And I just ask you that you don't have sympathy on me, but on my kids, because I'm no, I don't do that here. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but it's just that I haven't seen my kids and I saw them right now. But I haven't, you know, I'm a I'm human. And I did make the mistake and it was just like, I was scared and I did another mistake and another mistake and another mistake. And I, I don't want to make an excuse and say that I was not my fault. It was my fault. All right. Let me just tell you right I now. Better. So at the end of the day, I'm not giving you outpatient treatment. So that's off the table. Okay. Either you're doing inpatient treatment or either you're going to prison. So which would you prefer? I mean, whatever's best for me, I guess. No, I don't know what's best for you. That's you, you, you know yourself. You know if you have a drug problem. Obviously, you do because we're here. You are not doing outpatient treatment at all because you can't write your own program. If you could have written your own program, you would not be here. You would have successfully completed this probation. So, no, you know yourself better than I do, better than your attorney, and better than the state. So you're either going to inpatient treatment or either you're going to prison. And at the prison, I will sentence you to three years and you can be in the therapeutic community. And once you complete it, your term, you're done. But if I send you to inpatient treatment, if you are unsuccessful on this probation, you're looking up to 10 years in the prison. So which would you prefer? Well, inpatient. All right, I'll deny the motion. Alternate main conditions. She doesn't need a new tap, does she? Judge, her case, in, in, her case expired November 9th of 2022. Oh. Um, she will need a, a new tap. All right, so your case has expired. So what I'm going to do, uh, violation number two is true. Going to find you guilty. Uh, alternate main conditions. to sentence you to eight years in the prison, suspend it for six years. There should be a TAP evaluation while in custody. Follow all TAP recommendations. If TAP recommends outpatient treatment, then we'll start with ISF, cognitive and substantive. And you said you're helping your children. How are you helping your children? I'm everything to my children. No, what does that mean? Well, I'm the mom. I've never, their dad's never been in their life and I do everything for my children. I send them to school. I pay for everything that they do. I'm there. I mean, I pay all the bills. I How old are your children? My children are 20, 16 and nine. All right. So who is the nine-year-old with? The nine-year-old right now is with my mother. All right. And the other child, who is she with? They're all right now staying at home. They're with my mother. They're with your mother. Yeah. Think, who is? And I think they're actually present here today. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you need drug treatment. Otherwise, you shouldn't be in their life. Do you have any grandchildren? No, I don't have any. Okay. So tap evaluation while in custody. Is there anything else she needs? I don't know. Anything she needs to do? There are, um, but not presently. After, after the ISF, since she has been adjudicated, would you like any of the other conditions? All previous conditions are to remain. And you're going to have to do parenting classes. I don't even know if you completed that yet. I did. I did. I, I have the certificate and stuff at home. All right. And then after she's released, we'll do the UA hotline. Is there anything else she needs? Is there anything else you need uh, from the court? Um, All right. So she's going to remain in custody until that's done. Ms. Hernandez. Yes. And we're off the record. Here's the thing. You cannot come to court and use the fact that your children need you to try to get sympathy from me and have me do something other than what I would do if you did not have children. What you should do is take care of your children in the free world and do what it's expected of you and you wouldn't be here. I know. And it is a shame that you had to have your children come down here because Deputy Laura will tell you 
your attorney will tell you and Deputy Mejia will, will tell you, bringing in your children to say, my children need me, doesn't really pull at my heartstrings because I look at facts to see what's going on. You understand? All right, good luck to you. Oh, oh, and I think her sister would also say that she would be in support of some kind of mental health, that there is a mental health component here. All right. And so we were just going to, I don't know if there's anything we'll further. I think probably what the court has ordered is going to be sufficient. To All right. Um, but Sean, can you also do a mental health, I mean, a MIC evaluation? Yes, Sean. All right. So you need to let them know if there's any mental health issues. You understand? Oh. All right. I think that's. That would be good and help her be successful, actually, for okay. getting the right programs. All right. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Judge. Sure. Adam Sancho. Oh, they're going to enter a plea? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, no, no. He can stay seated. They're going to do a plea. All right, and then after Sancho, I think that will be it. Unless we have, do we have someone else who's ready? All right. Is it Sancho? Yes. I'm going to switch Sancho in. Oh, okay. Yes. Norma, anyone left on a docket after this, they can come back on Monday. Uh, what about um, we told Meredith to be here at one thirty? Okay, we'll see if she's here at one thirty. If not, she'll be back here on Monday.
Stop talking to him. Central. All right. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, the party is on Sancho. All right, bye bye. Court is calling 2022 CR 1747, State of Texas versus Adam Raymond Sancho. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hey, Lucas for the state, Your Honor. Defense. Showing you on, Your Honor. Are you, are you Mr. Sancho? Yes, sir. Showing you what's entitled Motion to Enter Adjudication of Guilt and Revoke Community Supervision. First Amendment Motion to Enter Adjudication of Guilt and Revoke Community Supervision. State's motion to supplement pending motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision. Did you review those documents with your attorney? Did you understand them? Yes. Are you the same Adam Raymond Sancho who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2022 CR 1747 for the offense of possession of a controlled substance penalty group one less than one gram on May 19, 2022 for a period of three years? Is that you? State? Violated condition number one. On or about the 14th day of December 2022 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Adam Raymond Sancho, committed the offense of evading arrest or detention with a vehicle in violation of condition number one. How do you plead to that? True or not true? All right, you need to speak up so everybody can hear you. True, no. And Your Honor, we waive the, uh, the other... Uh, but Any objections? No objections? Did you understand by pleading true to violation condition number one, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, sentence you to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead tr true to violation of condition number one? Yes, ma'am. Court will find violation of condition number one true. Is there an agreement? There is, Your Honor. On the motion to revoke, uh, the defendant is going to serve uh, 18 months of state jail. And then do you want me to go on the uh, No, the other... just this one. Okay, this one. Is that the agreement, 18 months state jail? I'm going to ask the court to uh, recommend the therapeutic community forum and uh, the 80-20 program. He does wish to request treatment. Please. All right. Are you asking the court to follow that agreement? Yes, Your Honor. 
Are you waiving your right to appeal? Yes. Sir. And you want me to follow this agreement? Yes. Sir. All right. Court will follow your agreement. The court is finding violation of condition number one true. Court will find you guilty, revoke you, sentence you to 18 months in the state jail facility, give you credit for any time served. I request the therapeutic community. This will run concurrent with 2023 CR 2283. Showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Court is calling 2023 CR 2283. Counsel, have you received all the discovery in this case and did you review it with your client? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? I do, Your Honor. State, are you pre proceeding on the indictment as presented? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, sir. Did you understand you're charged with evading arrest detention with a vehicle? That's a third degree felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from two to 10 years in prison and up to $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, sir. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea bargain agreement. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state will call and the right to remain silent? Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? Yes, ma'am. Did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? I do, Your Honor. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sancho, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? Mm -hmm. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea? Mm -hmm. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial, showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, According to the plea, punishments be assessed at two years in the prison. The state will take in consideration 2023 CR 2282 and 2023 CR 5160, and there are no applications. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, ma'am. Defense is that the plea? Thank you. Yes, State, is that the plea? State, is that the plea? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. Right. Did you review the paragraph entitled Waiver of Appeal paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it in both places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have there been any such motions? No, Your Honor. Then to the offenses charge, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? State, any evidence to support the defendant's no contest plea? Your Honor, I submit states exhibit one and the objections. Any objections? Objection, Your Honor. Mr. Sancho, did you review the document entitled Wavering Consent to Stipulation of Testimony and Stipulations with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses, statements, and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments. The court has reviewed the same. Court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty and the court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? 
Your Honor, he he really, I think, wants to get some sort of treatment. Uh, it was not on the table today, but uh, but we have requested that, and the court has graciously uh, recommended him to go to the therapeutic community. All right. Court will follow your agreement, sentence you to two years in the prison, give you credit for any time served, take in consideration 2023 CR 2282, 2023 CR 5160. This is Ryan concurrent with 2022 CR 1747, and I'll request the therapeutic community. Did you review the document entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, sir. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? No. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, we can go off the record. Good luck to you. You're going to have to do better. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself in and out of someone's prison. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, good luck. You're welcome. Make sure you stay on the bench. <laughs> All right. Anyone else ready? Uh, All right. I'm ready on this law part. Um, I'd like you to read this supplement first. Okay. It was submitted to me yesterday. Okay. Last night. All right. Yeah. I haven't been able to get it over to you. That gives some insight on what's going on there. All right, does she have a probate? I mean, does she have a defense attorney or no? Um, not present, Your Honor. Ah, I see. Could I see the file on Chardonnay Lockhart, please? Okay. Has she ever been to felony drug court or no? And if you could remain just a little bit, Mr. Brooks. I had some follow up on my article. Oh, you do? Yeah, I, I can't help myself. I stepped out and called the contact person. Mm -hmm. He is part of the infrastructure with the reservation. Mm -hmm. uh, they do not have any inpatient programs for her since she's pregnant. He was familiar with her. Their outpatient program transporting them to meetings, AANA. She does have a place to live with her sister down there on the reservation. Uh, I asked him to follow up. Do you know if the county has anything on that side? It's such a small place. Things mm -hmm. like there's not that. Well, is there transport available for her? I asked a question. So if the supervisor approves it, then they can come up and pick her up and take her down there. He said he doesn't think it'll be a problem as long as it's going to be released. Oh, Just okay. Let him, know if, um, let him know if that was going to happen and we can submit that request and get everything aligned. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Brooke, this is on Mr. Lock, Ms. Lockhart. Judge, may I be excused? Yes, you may. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll see you later. Thank you. 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 Yes, she's uh, speaking with the probation officer right there. So this was the previous conditions 
work for a felony drug court referral and make evaluation. And uh, Bashan will be able to tell you more about it. Okay. Hello. Yeah, this is a motion to release a bus for tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So in this case, we're just waiting for you all to do paperwork. Yes. All right, uh, Diana, we can take another break because we're just waiting for them to do their paperwork. And then I think this will be the last one. And then Miss Lockhart. Cool. Well, Brew Baker is with Meredith. Is that correct? We can hold Brew Baker till 1.30. Yeah. I mean, well, it's supposed to be 1.30. Can you mute us, please? Mute us, please. Thank you.
Everybody at back. No, oh, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you for sending everybody back. And then if I could have the all the other files, please, that are still on the docket. These are the only ones that are remaining? Yeah. Okay. And so Burbank is going to be recalled on Monday, Norma. Thank you. Uh, Norma, was Rocky Pena, Brandon Pena reset? All right. And Antonio Rios? All right, yes, recall it from Monday. And Jonathan Allen. Oh, that's you. All right. All right, these are done. They're doing a plea on that one. And then Isaiah Escobedo. And that's the one that was telling me about that she got to do some on Monday. Why wasn't he here today? Um, I told him that you know about his family and him that were ill with COVID. Oh, ill with COVID. Okay. He said he could be here on Monday. All right. We'll have that come back on the 31st. All right, so this plea is the last case. Yes. Yes. Yes, until further notice. Uh, Norma, do you have all the reset dates or do we need to go over that? Um, okay. It's the only missing one that I have, so. Uh, Lockhart? Yes. Uh, and they are, probation is going to go over things with her. Okay, so that's, yeah, that's one of the things. And those are done. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's right. That's all I'm sorry. Yeah, the only one that was next to me. It wasn't a one. Sorry. 
<laughs> yes. Oh, no, it is not cold in here. Yeah. No. Okay. All right. Thank you. Court is calling 2022-CR-11097, State of Texas versus Jonathan Kane Allen. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Ruben Herrera for the state. Defense. Are you Jonathan Allen? Yes, sir. Counsel, have you received all the discovery in this case and did you review it with your client? Uh, court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. All right, before we proceed any further, the court sees that this was actually set for a status of his uh, competency evaluation. Was that completed? Yes, it was. And what were the results? That he was found competent. All right, Mr. Allen, I'm showing you what's entitled application for deferred adjudication or community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? 
And did you sign it? Showing you the true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, do you weigh the reading of the indictment? Yes. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? We are, yeah. Showing you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants' waivers and affidavit or admonitions. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you're charged with the offense of injury to the elderly bodily injury? That's a third degree felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from two to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, if you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea bargain agreement. If for any reason the court doesn't follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? I understand that. Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? Yes. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? I did. Did you understand if the court were to grant your application for deferred adjudication, if for any reason your deferred adjudication were revoked, the court could find you guilty, sentence you up to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine? Yes, ma'am, I understand. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? Yes. Do you believe he's currently competent, competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? So. Mr. Allen, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, ma'am. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, ma'am. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, I have. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, I am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the police, state recommends deferred adjudication. They were taken in consideration. County court cause number 692049. There's an affirmative finding of family violence. Did you understand with an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition? Yes, I do. Did you understand with an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to be designated as primary custodial parent? Yes, I do. Did you understand that to be your plea? I understand. Defense? He does. State? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, I did, ma'am. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal, the only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court? Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have there been any such motions? No. Showing you outside the plea bargain agreement, the state is requesting that your community supervision be for a term of four years. There be no contact with Sally Kane, C-A-I-N, the BIPP program, mental health evaluations, and to follow those recommendations. Did you understand those were recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Okay. Uh, yes, I understand. Then to the offense's charge, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. State any evidence? State offers states exhibit one and all of which attachments. No objection. Showing you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? I understand. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence state's exhibits one and attachments. Court has reviewed the same. The court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty. However, the court will defer finding of guilt as you apply for deferred adjudication. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, sir. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Oh, yeah. All right. Mr. Allen, do you have a place to stay? Yes, I do. In Chevron Park. And who is that with? It's a house that I purchased from my mom. It's not with my mom. It's it's my own place to live. All right. Are you employed? Not to, not right now. I'm, I'm a freelance artist. I'm, I'm working on a assistant job at Trinity University. All right. This, do you have any children? Yes, I have two children. 
Brie Elizabeth Allen and Travis Kino. What are their ages? Um, 12 and 14, I believe, where they are. And she's about to go into the 10th grade. All right, the court is going to sentence you to four years deferred adjudication. There's an affirmative finding of family violence. There's to be no contact with Sally Kane. <clears throat> Take into consideration county court cause number 692049, the BIPP program, MIC evaluation, to follow all recommendations. That's to take place while he's in custody, a TAP evaluation while in custody, follow those recommendations. Proof of employment within 45 days of release. There should be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. If you're going to be working on a campus, you have to let them know about this charge if they don't ask. You understand? Okay. Understand. Regular reporting by Zoom or in person. Is there a drug issue with you? No, ma'am. All right. Regular UAs. Field visits. Hmm? It's a lack of drugs issue. All right. Field visits one time per month and probation. That's to continue until he's in some sort of mental health. Well, on some sort of mental health program, either with the MIC or with Center for Healthcare Services. Uh, I have a connection, connection with uh, Ramon Sanchez over in the uh, Seattle of Verde Towers. All right, just make sure you give that information to probation. Okay. And could you repeat that again? I have a connection with Ramon Sanchez over at Sierra Verde Jail. Siesta Verde? Oh, Sierra Verde. Yeah. Yeah. I, I pronounced it wrong, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, and if, he, if that's where he's going to do it through some sort of private means, then that will be allowed. Uh, probation, is there anything else he needs? All right, I'm going to do 200 hours community service restitution. If he completes parenting classes, those will be waived. Judge, uh, the children are currently with his mother. She's because of his mental condition. The mother's been assigned the custodian mm -hmm. for the children. And, and her and I have had extensive uh, discussions as well as with the state. Um, she, we would like it to be a no harmful or injurious contact with his mom because he's going to have to be able to visit his children. Um, Would be all right to call him? No. Uh, what I'll do is once he's on his road to treatment, starting the program, you always can come back and I'll reconsider. Okay. And, and I'll bring the mom to talk to you as well. Yes. All right. All right. Is there anything else? That's it. All right. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? I think so. All right. Well, is that your signature? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. And because this is an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you need to speak to an attorney. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. We can go off the record. You need to make sure that you stay in contact with your daughter. If there's some, I mean, with your doctor, if there's something wrong with your medications, if, if it's a side effect that you don't like, you need to let your doctor know instead of just stopping altogether. You understand? Okay. All right. Uh, probation will go over conditions with you. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. All right. We will be back on Monday. But we'll all be here Friday, but we won't have any cases back until Monday. Yes. Have a great weekend.